Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Radio Networks on a, son- a Saturday. I thought it was Sunday, but it's not. It's Saturday, November 3rd, 2012. This is episode 923. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by ShareFile.com. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Visit ShareFile.com. Click the radio microphone and enter Tech Guy. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your iPhone, iPad, MacBook, or other smartphone. Find out what your gadget's worth at Gazelle.com. Leo Laporte here. The tech guy. It's time to talk about computers, the internet, cell phones, camcorders, home theater, MP3 player, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> sold them. Everything with a chip in it. That's what we talk about here on the show. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. I think we're done with the devices. No, we're not. I take it back. I thought we were done with the new devices for 2012. I think in a couple of weeks, there's a new Windows phone or two. Then we can finally stop talking about the new stuff and then start speculating about the next new stuff. I'm actually ready to start speculating about the next new stuff right now. (laughs) Why wait? I've got the iPad mini in my uh, hot little hands. Um, You know, it's an interesting device. It fits uh, inside... If you want an idea of the size, it's just uh, it's the same width as the regular iPad screen, not the whole iPad, just the screen, and a little bit shorter. Uh, but in in theory, uh, it's you know it's the idea is it's the same real estate as the iPad, just shrunk down. And I have to say, I like the size. I I but I've been a fan of seven inch tablets since uh, my first seven. You never forget your first seven inch back uh, almost, well, more than a year ago, the Samsung uh, Galaxy 7, which, uh, yeah, I got it a year ago last summer, so say 18 months ago. Uh, and I and at that point, at that time, I said, oh, I like 7 inches. I think it's a good size. Uh, and, and in fact, my uh, favorite 7-inch tablet is the uh, Galaxy Nexus, which is another Google product, kind of the follow-up to the Samsung. Uh, but there's a difference between the way Apple does seven inches. Well, first of all, it's not seven inches; it's seven point nine. Well, okay. Uh, but there's also a difference in terms of aspect ratio because uh, the other seven-inch tablets are all sixteen by nine. Now, best way to to explain this is your home theater system. Your old TV was a four by three. You know, the one you watched "I Love Lucy" on Gilligan's Island. I dream of G- that was a four by three screen, and then. Your plasma, your LCD, your widescreen TVs, they're 16 by 9 uh, to better accommodate video. And, uh, you know, it's funny because Apple uh, with the iPad is still 4 by 3. And it might seem like, well, golly, I'm not watching I Love Lucy. Why would they do that? But, but what else is 4 by 3 in your life? I took a, a musician sent me an email and explained this to me. I didn't. I wasn't thinking. He says... It's, it's the same aspect ratio as an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. So, oh, so there is still four by three stuff in our life. It's called uh, sheet music, uh, paper, and uh, it turns out in some ways when you, when what you're doing is an analog, not of video, not of television and movies, but of uh, of uh, paper, newspaper, reading a book. I like. I have to say, I like the four by three better. It did feel a little weird to read a Kindle book on the Kindle Fire and the uh, Nexus 7 because they're so tall, you know. But when you read a Kindle book on the iPad, even on the iPad Mini, just f- it feels it fits it feels right. It feels like it's a. You now I have to say the iPad Mini doesn't fit in your hand, even though the ads show it. I mean, I guess it does, but I don't think you're going to hold it like that because it's a bit of a even for. Well, I don't have massive hands. Actually, I have kind of small hands. I guess if you're a basketball player, if you have big hands, if you're a guy with big hands, you won't. But I feel a little bit of a stretch. 
feels like a yoga position. <laughs> it's not it's not fully comfortable to hold it in the in one hand. So I suspect you'll do as we did with the uh, other iPad, which is hold it with two hands. That's fine. Not the end of the world. It's very light. Kind of is like reading in a Kindle. Um, so I so I have to say the iPad Mini. I'm I'm you know I'm I'm liking it. I'll you know I'm going I'm about to go on a two week uh, trip to Australia, putting together my traveling kit, and I probably will prefer the Mini over the standard sized iPad. It's lighter, it's more compact, and it's got the same screen real estate. Well, sort of. Now this is where the negatives come in. The biggest negative, and I don't know why, there are two negatives that, that make me kind of mad because I know why Apple did it, and I, I feel like it's a greedy thing on their part. First of all, it's not a retina. It's not a high-res display. It's 1024 by 768. It's like the iPad 1 and 2. And even at this small size, you do notice that if you, when you look closely, text is not as crisp as it ought to be. It's not as clear. Maybe because we're used to the retina displays. I even have a Retina laptop, and I and I far prefer a high. What does Retina mean, by the way? It's a it's a te, it's a marketing term. It's not a technical term. But as Apple defines Retina, and uh, and ophthalmologists I've spoken to agree, it's a dot size, a number of dots or pixels per inch that are high enough that you can't see the pixels at normal dist viewing distance. So that means on. Um, and I'm going to have to get my DPI calculator out here to, to fill you in on what that means. Because um, they're, all, all they're all different pixels per inch now, <laughs> unfortunately. There's a great little, uh, it's, it's from a ping.de DPI calculator uh, that I, uh, I use all the time to figure this stuff out. The third generation Apple iPad, uh, and the fourth too for that matter, the Retina Apple iPad is 2048 by 1536. Now that means on a 9.7 inch screen that it's 264 pixels per inch. 264. And they call that retina because at the kind of half arm's length that you would read a iPad screen, you can't see the dots. It's very crisp. In fact, it really is. It kind of spoils us, to be honest. The iPhone 5 is 325 pixels per inch, or actually 326 if you round up. That's even more. That's a lot. 325 pixels per inch. But then uh, we go 1024 by 768 in a 7.9 inch, and we go down a little bit like half as much, 162 pixels per inch. And what that means is text isn't as crisp, images aren't as crisp. Yeah, it's a smaller screen. You may be, you, you probably, you know, you won't. The point is that Apple could have made this a retina display. Why, I'm not, in there, even at the price point that they're charging, 329 bucks, there's no reason why they couldn't. The other thing I'm not thrilled about is it has the same 5 megapixel camera as the iPhone 4, and the uh, iPad. I would love to have seen the 8 megapixel camera in the iPhone uh, 4S and 5. So, because, you know, this is a nice size. This now doesn't, you don't look quite so goofy holding this, taking pictures. You really look goofy. And I, <laughs> somebody told me that were, they were at a David Byrne concert. And he said, take as many pictures as you want, but please don't do it with an iPad. Why? Because, well, you're at a concert and somebody's got this big old screen as they take pictures it just looks like it's terrible ruins the view this isn't so bad and it should be great for taking a video and so forth so i you know it, it's not that it's bad it's that apple could have and didn't and i, I know why they did it it's cynical they want to give you something to buy next year because guess what next year for sure this will have a retina display the iPad Mini, and it'll. Whether I don't know whether it'll have an eight, eight, eight megapixel camera or not. However, having said that, three. Uh, this is the three hundred twenty nine dollar version I have because the, the I wanted it now, and the Wi Fi only version is only available now. Thirty two gigs of memory. That's a lot. That's not a not an insignificant amount. I got all my audiobooks for the plane trip, all my music for the plane trip, on thirty two gigs, and a bunch of apps. Uh, it doesn't have GPS, so I didn't put the map app, you know, the uh, the the driving apps, the GP, all those. I left those out. This is to me, and I didn't put, uh, nor did I put Apple's uh, Pages or Keynote or any of the productivity apps on here, because to me, this is not um, a creation tool. It's a it's 
it's it's a it's a it's for the airplane. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to get on the airplane and I'm going to be able to keep myself entertained for 14 and a half hours on the way to Sydney. It's a little it's bigger than an iPod Touch. It's all a little bit more expensive. I think what is it? the iPod Touch starts at 299. The Touch is Retina. This is not. All right, we have to take a break. I'm going to give you I'm going to tease you. I'm going to do like Apple did. I'll tell you my the bottom line when we come back. I disagree. I, I think they could uh, easily do a retina on this without... Uh... Yeah, compare it to the my phablet. Hey, you're busy. We're all busy. We're all busy. And there are probably busy. lots of things you'd rather do. So here's right my, uh, here's my Galaxy Nose. Like I like it, too, actually. <laughs> but you it's my now. My, so if they had made this retina, it would be my preferred. And that's what I think Apple, even if they had to charge the same as the iPad, what they could have done is said there's a big iPad and there's a little iPad. It's so much lighter. I, I, I think they probably should have just bit the bullet and said, okay, we're going to charge. Yeah, I like it. I think it's pretty. Now compare this. This is, <laughs> if you want to compare sizes, this is the uh, Galaxy Note 2. That's my son. And, uh, you know, there's a pretty big difference. Let me put, I play a lot of chess uh, on this thing. I use the chess to compare because I have the same chess game on both. Uh, let me see, where is it? Same, it's the same exact program on both Android and uh, you know what iPhone, except it's upside down on the. Uh, okay. So. Now I, I've turned down the brightness. Let me turn that up. Oh, well, it's pretty bright. Let's get it to match, though, right? Because that's not fair. Um, if you set aside the the darkness of the brown, and I think that's just the app, um, it's just nicer to have that big. You could tell the difference, can't you? Oh, you're right. There's wood grain on the. Uh, that's why it's skeuomorphic on the Android. Now this is big enough to play, but this is more like a pocket set. Don't judge it by the screen. I, I don't think that's fair. Um, because, you know, lighting differences and everything. And it's a different app. It's because yeah. it's, it's, yeah, I know it looks washed out. It's not washed out. Let me put something. Uh, well, here's your books. Uh, yeah, it's a little, it does look a little washed out. It's not. Here, let's put Flipboard on both. How about that? That's a good, that's a good head-to-head. -head. I just think the extra space makes it, you know, it's nice. Head to head. <laughs> Boy, that's a there, there's a notable difference there. I just I just think uh, this is this is what you want. I'm just mad at Apple that they didn't do Retina. Next is seven. You want to compare the two on that? Let's do that. That's a great idea. Same game. Same game. By the way, you can't at this point. Neither uh, neither Android nor uh, iPhone have iOS have an advantage in apps. Now this is great. Uh, see, it's a little bigger, isn't it? Let's do Flipboard. This will be the tablet Flipboard in both cases. See, I keep Flipboard on my front page. I like it so much. So you can see they're actually using, there's a lot more real estate the way they lay it out.
from the moment I heard Frau say I had a clone. It's mini me. I knew that I'd be safe because I'd never be alone. An evil doctor shouldn't speak aloud about his feelings. My hurt and my pain don't make me too appealing. I'd hope Scott would look up to me. Run the business of the family. Had an evil... Leo LaPointe, he's that guy. Give him my love and the things uh, I never uh, had. Scott uh. would think. I was a cool guy. It's mini me, mini Mac. Now, so I'm a little... I, I, I just think Apple... I, okay, let me... <laughs> Too many thoughts cascading through my my brain. We're looking at the iPad Mini. Just came out. Wi-Fi available now. Uh, the 3G version will be available soon. Uh, of course, in response, uh, Google dropped the uh, the price on its Nexus 7. The Nexus 7 is, uh, in terms of pure capability, uh, just assume they're equal at this point. Uh, there are 700,000 Android apps, 750,000 iPhone apps. In both cases, there's about two, three, four hundred, maybe 500,000 more apps than you care about already. <laughs> there's plenty, in other words. So it's not the apps. It's not even the ecosystem. I think uh, Google Play and uh, iTunes, very similar. There may be a political, you know, you may have a political difference or preference for one or the other. Um, I just, the form factor of the mini is gonna, is a winner for me. I like the 4x3. I'm a little angry that Apple said... What Apple decided to do is make it as inexpensively as they could. Still more, much more. 100... What is it? 100... It's 329 compared to... For a 32 gig compared to 250. So it's 80 bucks more than the comparable Nexus 7. Is it 130 bucks, JC Calhoun? What's the Nexus... The Nexus 7 for 250, you get 32 gigs now. For for three twenty nine on the both Wi Fi for three twenty nine on the iPad Mini you get thirty two gigs I think it's the same so it's eighty bucks difference is is it worth eighty bucks more That's a very good question <laughs> to be honest uh, I you know I'm gonna have to leave price aside That's up to you and what how price sensitive you are. The Nexus 7, if the 80 bucks makes a big difference to you, the Nexus 7 is just as good. Just as good. Um, you know, screen-wise, functionality, applications, um, fantastic. However, if you're first of all, if you've invested a lot in the uh, iPad ecosystem, you might want to spend more because you don't want to rebuy apps. It's probably more than 80 bucks worth of apps, right? Not to mention the trouble of downloading them all. Um, one could argue that iOS is a little more uh, polished, but one could also argue that Android is a little bit more capable, isn't it? I, it, For me, it comes down to uh, the aspect ratio. Now, the Android screen on the Nexus 7 is a higher res screen. A lot, a lot Pixels per inch, much better. It's a beautiful screen. But I'm just, I'm, I think you should go look at them both. And to me, I like a 4x3 for the stuff I'm doing. If you're... Um, if you're uh, watching movies, you might want a widescreen. You might prefer it. If what you do mostly is watch video and movies, it's not what I do on my tablet, but if it's what you do mostly, then the Nexus 7 probably is the right choice for you. It's 1280 by 807 inches, so that's 215 pixels per inch. Remember, the iPad Mini only 165. We, and that does matter. I know that seems like we're making a big deal about that. That may be the stat that matters most because you're looking at it all the time. I am a little... I, you know, I would have liked to see Apple maybe offer a Retina version with a better camera, even if it's a hundred bucks more. Uh, that would be then it would be an absolute no brainer. But having I was skeptical about the Mini, especially because of the lack of a Retina display. Having played with this now, this is the one I'm going to probably live with on the airplane on the trip. This is the right size. It's very very uh, light. Feels good in the hand, and I like the 4x3. Um, when you look at things like Flipboard and the Kindle app, it's just a little bit better on this, I think. So uh, while init my initial reaction on the Mini when I first read about it is, this is a flop, this is terrible, why didn't they make it Retina, why didn't they put a better camera in, who's going to spend $329? The truth is, I don't see this as a low-priced iPad. I think that's maybe a mistake Apple made. This should They should consider this... A smaller iPad, not a cheaper iPad. And maybe maybe that then makes sense to you. A smaller, not a cheaper iPad. It's okay to pay more 
for less or pay as much for less. Smaller isn't worse. It's more convenient. It's more portable. It's easier to uh, sit in bed with it. So I think that that's, uh, that's fine. I think this will sell well. I think when people see it, it'll sell well. So let me get let me get this straight because the chat room saying my math is wrong. Three hundred twenty nine dollars for a Wi Fi iPad Mini, right? Oh, well, maybe I got the maybe I got the bigger one. Ah, I should check. Maybe maybe do they start at sixteen? I now I apologize. I'm not uh, I'm not up. Let's go let's go shop the iPad Mini. Three twenty nine is 16 gigs. You're right. I apologize. So to make apples to apples, it is $129 more. Man, that's a lot. Actually. All right. $130 more for uh, for the same size, same amount of memory. If you want 32 gigs, it's $250 on a Nexus 7, $429 for an iPad mini. You know what? I'm throwing it away, going back to the Nexus 7. That is, a, that is enough of a price differential. These are close enough that it's probably not worth. That's a big difference. 50% more. That's a big difference. Forget about it. <laughs> On the other hand, if, if price is not an object, I do. this is nice. <laughs> You're right. That, okay, 80 bucks, it didn't, didn't bother me. 130 bucks. The Nexus 7 is so good. It's so complete. Oh, 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 well, well there's a couple of things you're you're not getting a back camera though, are you on the Nexus 7? No, you're not. So if you want to use if you want to take pictures, is that worth a little bit of money? What's wild is 300 bucks you get a 16 or 32 gig iPod touch. <laughs> I'm a flip-flopper. Do not vote for me for president. I can just tell you that right now. I'll change my mind at the drop of a hat. People act like changing your mind is a bad thing. By the way, you probably shouldn't do it in the period of 30 seconds, as I just did. <laughs> but I think if you get new facts, changing your mind is not such a bad thing. Anyway, Tom in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Tom. Hey there, Leo. How's it going? Thanks for calling. I'm, I'm doing great. Hey there. I am looking for a new USB headset for my computer. Yes, that's a great thing. Now, people often think they'll just plug it into the analog, you know, the the audio ports, and that does not give you a good result. If you're using Skype or you're gaming, get a USB. You're absolutely right. Is it for gaming or for Skype? Um, actually, Skype and doing webinars via GoToWebinar. Ah, how fun. Well, I'll tell you what we buy our podcasters. because uh, Now, there are a lot of good choices. Logitech makes some great ones. Um, are you on a Mac or PC? On a Mac. Okay, that does matter because Logitechs often don't work very well on Macs. They don't seem to do drivers uh, for the Macs very well. So I recommend the Plantronics dot audio, and I think the model number is the 655. That's what we send our podcasters, and we're very happy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. You were right, J.C. Calhoun. I apologize profusely. I was wrong. I forgot that I did not buy the base model. I thought, I don't know why, and I'm glad I didn't buy the base model. <laughs> because I filled it up. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, I plan to take a lot of pictures with this. You notice I put a whole page of photography apps on here. See, to me, so having that, even the 5 megapixel camera is not too bad. But, you know, I've got, you know, camera plus and you know, Snapseed and Tilt Shift and uh, HDR and Panos and all that stuff on here. Now, let me show you the usage because, um, so this is the 32 gig of which 28.3 is free uh, on a new one, right? That's the available capacity, you know, so significant amounts used for iOS and stuff. I got 1,600 songs on here. That's plenty for me on my trip. I didn't put any video on here. There's a few photos. 84 apps. It's kind of a stripped-down set of apps. And uh, what it doesn't show here is I've 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 got audio, a ton of audio books. Uh, and those tend, to be, uh, those tend to be heavier. 
So I put uh, the books that I'm going to be listening to on the trip I put on here. <laughs> I got 11 books on here. <laughs> no Easy Day, Ready Player One, Kill Decision, Grand Pursuit, which is a history of economics, The End of Money, which is about the end of money. Uh, among others, Joe Walton, that was, I think, Brian Brush would recommend it. Name of the Wind, that's a Trey Ratcliffe, Night Soldiers. I got the new Pete Townsend biography, The Tourist, Shadow of the Wind, and I'm finishing Cloud, Cloud uh, Atlas. So these will be, <laughs> that'll be my books. Um, and then songs, I got quite a few. I got a lot of music. I like to, uh, when I'm on a plane, stick in the etymotics to seal out the sound and listen, put classical music on and try to sleep. Oh, I'm taking cameras. I'm taking a ton of cameras. I didn't even mention this is this is a this is like a backup camera because I'm taking my 5D Mark II, of course, with all the lenses, and I'm taking a Hero Three. If this were Retina, it would be I would be willing to pay fifty bucks or a hundred bucks more for Retina, and then I'd be really thrilled, thrilled, really thrilled. So I'm bringing the Note. I'm bringing the iPhone 5. See, I finally got my uh, rock form. That is a hideous color. I thought I was getting red. It looks like a tomato soup. So I mentioned <laughs> to Kyle that I loaded up this uh, iPad mini with uh, classical music because the I got a long flight on uh, Sunday, 14 and a half hours to uh, Sydney from San Francisco. And what I like to do is uh, stick in the... Uh, the uh, Edemotic headphones, because they seal out everything. You can't hear any sounds, especially that kid behind you screaming. And then put classical music on and try to sleep. Sometimes I'll put a blanket over my head, which doesn't help. <laughs> 8888, ask Leo. It's also appropriate because it's Scott Wilkinson time, and he is, after all, a, uh, a, a wind man. That... <laughs> Scott will be here next week, and I should mention it to uh, host the show. He's going to fill in for me while I'm in, in Australia. So if you like home theater, if you're interested in home theater, it'll be all home theater all day next weekend with Scott Wilkinson, our home theater guru. Good uh, good day to you, Scott. Hey, Leo, you bet. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Have you ever played that on a bus? What is that, a uh, French horn? No, no, ba -ba 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 -ba. I, I have it's uh, it's the whole, it's the whole orchestra. Well, I playing. know it is, but I mean, yeah, what, yeah. you you play wind instruments, so would you be playing that on the French horn? I would on uh, trombone. Trombone, wow, yeah, yeah. I didn't know Beethoven I, had trombones in his time. He did, he did. He wrote uh, trombones in several of the symphonies. Uh, the fifth, I'm pretty sure. The sixth and the ninth, certainly. Love the ninth. Um, and and typically in that period, the trombone was used either as the voice of God. Or the voice of doom. <laughs> or both. In, or in both. most cases, yeah. <laughs> Scott Wilkinson <laughs> writes for uh, a great magazine, The Secrets of Home Theater Hi-Fi, at uh, hometheaterhi-fi.com. You can answer, uh, he answers questions there, but you can also watch his podcast every Monday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on Twit, twit.tv. Yep. Home Theater Geeks. And you're going to be, now, I want to let you off the hook here. Uh-oh. You said, I'm, you're going to stay in my place. I'm putting you up right. next weekend, and then you said you'd. I appreciate that. You said you'd calibrate the home theater. You don't. You don't need to do that. Oh, but I want to. Well, you can play with it, but I, don't. I, I'm, I'll, I'm a little I'll worried. You, but... I'm a little worried because there's things. <laughs> there's things not right. For instance, and maybe yeah. maybe you'll figure this out. Okay, there's something called Arc Audio Return Channel on HDMI. Yes. Yes. So uh, I, the Viera that I bought, the new Panasonic, is actually neat because it's got. It's of all of them, I've tried a number of smart TVs. The LG, mm -hmm. the Samsung, and now this Panasonic. Of them, Panasonic easily the best smart apps. Uh, I would have to say, I would have to agree. Well laid out, makes sense. They've got social yep. media. It's kind of fun. You can actually squeeze the the video over and watch a Twitter feed. Uh, they've got a Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, all the stuff that I want. Voodoo. Yep. You can even do Skype if you have a. You the, can even do camp. Skype, and and it's yep. nicely laid out. It's logical. It feels fairly fast, which is sometimes an issue with these TVs. They don't put very big processors in them. So right. I got the GT fifty, and uh, I'm very right. happy with that. Uh, Good. Uh, anyway, you'll get you'll get to see it, and it has something called audio return channel on the HDMI, and yep. then so does my one, Denon. One of the... Yeah, just one, not HDMI one. Oddly enough, it's HDMI two. Yeah, I found that a bit odd too. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so I <laughs> plugged my Denon receiver into it. It also supports audio return channel, and the reason yep. I wanted that is because when I'm watching Netflix on the TV, the audio's on the TV. And yep. I want to get it back into my home theater so it can surround me. 
Yes. I finally figured exactly that out. Right. I got it working. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go into Vieira Connect. There's all these weird settings. I, you know, I literally had to search Google, and I found it finally. But oh, now okay. I got another question, and maybe when you come over, you can fix this. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Sure. I got Scott's going to come over and fix it. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Everybody should know Scott. Just come over and fix it. Sure, I'll be right over. <laughs> when I listen to Pandora, it's only in left and right. It thinks it's stereo. It doesn't use the the subwoofer, which is the main thing, or the center channel. But I'd love uh, it to use the subwoofer. Well, the P Pandora is uh, undoubtedly stereo. a stereo. Yeah. yeah, so it's only got two channels. But would they use if, the sub? Not necessarily, uh, unless you have the unless you have the receiver set up so that it reroutes everything below 80 hertz, say. Ah, so maybe I need to turn on the crossover. I did the Odyssey setup. That's fun, the automated setup where you, you plug mm -hmm. in a microphone, and it saw the subwoofer and the surround channels. And it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess maybe there's a setting in there that I have to turn on. Well, yeah, I, I, we, I would go in and check and make sure that it specified your main right and left speakers yeah. as what's called small. Oh, in I said they were big. See, that's why you're not getting the sub. He's so smart. So if I say small, that means, oh, they can't handle a, a low end. You better use a subwoofer. That's right. That's but right. they are fact, big. They're towers. Yeah, but they probably don't go down as low as the subwoofer. No, the subwoofer of... rattles the house. That's right. So, <laughs> it, this is why I always recommend, if you have a subwoofer and a 5.1 system or even a 2.1 system, in your receiver, you really need to specify your speakers as small, got even it. if they're not physically small. As got in your it. case, you've got these new Aperians, right, which probably sound great. Yeah, they sound wonderful. Um, but they probably don't go as low as the subwoofer, right. and they're not. you're not going to get the low frequencies from the main right and left channel in the subwoofer unless you specify small speakers in the receiver. Good to know. So Good to that's know. the answer to that question. Boy, see, again, if you know Scott, <laughs> you, can, you can ask him. <laughs> but next week, and next week, he's going to be. You, you got him all day. You can answer, ask all the questions you want. Scott will be here. That's right. Uh, for that, that's actually not next week. The following week. Oh, really? The seventeenth and eighteenth. Yeah, the next week, tenth and eleventh. Uh, you're going to be gone, but uh, you've pre-recorded a, a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to be on uh, virtually, which is very nice. We pre-recorded a couple of segments. No good. Well, uh, I told my then, son not to have a party next weekend, but he could have a party the weekend after. I better change oh, it's that. It's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, no, okay. no. I'm going to have a party the <laughs> you, weekend after next. Now, Scott, no parties in the house. <laughs> all right. I've got the neighbors checking out. So okay. You, all okay. right. We've got time for uh, some questions from uh, your audience. What do you got for us? Yes. I got a quick question here. Um, oh, I know, not from the chat room, but rather from... Uh, my uh, thing here. Oh, yes. Uh, a, pre a question about speaker sensitivity. You've yeah. seen this uh, specification probably, speaker sensitivity. Yes. It usually specifies 89 dB or 92 dB. And uh, Nathan Daniels wants to know, does this rating mean uh, that a given speaker will play a certain SPL, sound pressure level, at a given power, or does it also suggest how loud the speaker can be pushed before distortion occurs? Oh. And, and the answer is only the former. It uh, specifies how loud a speaker will play given one watt of power, only one watt of power, with the microphone at a distance of one meter from the speaker. So under those specific conditions, you put in one watt of power, you have a microphone one meter from the speaker, you measure how loud it is. You're not measuring distortion or anything else, just how loud it is, sound pressure. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And most speakers are in the 85 to 90-something range. That pretty loud for one watt. It's, it's very loud, which, is, which explains and illustrates why... Uh, the amount of power in an amplifier is not so critical. It's not like you really need 500 watts of power right. because you're only going to use the first couple of watts most of the time anyway, which is why audiophiles who, who love tube amps, and these tube amps might have 5 or 10 watts of power, uh, it's fine, especially if they get high-sensitivity speakers. That, that's amazing. 5 or 10 watts per channel seems so little. I know, I know. Of the, you know, the amps I'm buying, they're, they're 100 watts per channel, you know. Um, right. But right. that's the peak the peak level. The nice thing about tube, I would guess, is it doesn't distort as quickly. Where's well, it? actually, it does distort it does. tubes. Oh. Yes, but in, in a way that so many people like. A pleasant, a pleasant kind. <laughs> exactly.
Hey, Scott hey, Wilkinson, he's going to be here two weeks from now. You get all your questions answered. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More calls right after this. It's a warm distortion. Exactly. <laughs> what's, called, what's called second even for even for Right. I was very proud of myself that I was able to get the um, ARC work. There is and boy, no it sounds good. It sounds really yeah, good. Yeah, that nice. So yeah. much better than listening to the audio from the well, TV. Well, you know that Viera, uh, agreed, but the Viera has surprisingly good speakers. There's no, They're kind of out in the back. I don't know where they're, it's such a thin set. I don't know where they put them. I know, and I know in the case of Samsung, I haven't looked at the Vieras lately, but I know that the, in case of Samsung, the speakers are on the back of the TV. They are. So if you've got it right up against a wall, that's a real problem. <laughs> There's yeah, nowhere, exactly. There was nowhere good. You'll see I have an upstairs setup and a downstairs setup so that uh, the kids can watch what they want. Uh, Ultimate mm-hmm. fighting championship mostly. Yeah. And uh, Hey, if, if, if you're, you're sure you're okay for me going oh, I love and, and it. celebration. Uh, yeah, well, play with it all you want. I mean, I you know, there's no sofas. Gonna... There's no fur- I got to warn you. There's no yeah. furniture. I mean, there's a, there's a bed. <laughs> oh. But well, uh, my good. furniture doesn't come till uh, the end of the month or, or early December, so there's no couches. There's no there's there's no place to sit. Well, there's uh, down, TV? downstairs. There's one armchair, so <laughs> there's enough. Yes, you could sit and watch TV downstairs. Upstairs, okay. you'll have to sit on a bench. I got the benches for my dining room table, but not the table. So okay. um, yeah, it's a little weird, but yeah, there's places to sit. It, it's not ideal. And I'll leave okay. the Odyssey. Uh, I don't know if you use that or not. I'll leave the microphone. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Please do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll just uh, you know I'll just uh, see what I see what I see. I'll, I'll probably take some pre measurements of the video and see where Great. you're at. I mean, I'm thrilled that you're going to do that. The, I have to say, the Viera is beautiful. I'm very happy. I'm with sure it. it is. Have you picked like the movie mode or the cinema mode? Uh, like, yeah, I can't. I put it in a movie. I think. Yeah, you know, it's funny. It was not in dynamic uh, when it came. It was not when it came out. Oh, that's no, good. They put it in some uh, decent mode, but reasonable I, but mode. Yeah, probably, it wasn't. Probably, it's like normal. something called standard. Yeah, it was in standard. So yeah, which is not movie. bad, but it's not as good as movie. Yeah, that's going to still be the best. And then, um, and then I, uh, yeah. So I think you'll you'll have everything. The cables hooked up. The stereos hooked up. The Denon's hooked up. The Denon has AirPlay, which is fun. So I can play stuff. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this: um, Who should I contact when I get there to uh, arrange access? I'll leave a I'll leave a key here with uh, Liz. Okay. Um, I guess that's the best thing to do. Sure. Uh, Somebody who's going to be there. You're, will you come to the studio first? Probably. When do you think you'll come to the studio? Saturday. Yeah, yeah. So I would. I was thinking I would probably stay at your place um, Saturday night, or do you come Saturday Friday? Night. I, I might come. Well, I will be up in the area Friday. So hey, John, uh, I, do you, I, John Slanina, do you come in on Fridays? Do you come in on Fridays, John? Are you are you here on Fridays? Okay, I'm going to leave you a key for Scott Wilkinson because I think not, there's I think not a week from Friday, but two bet. weeks from Fridays. And, right. and he's all, John will come in on Saturday or leave it with somebody if he's not here on, if you come in on Saturday if he doesn't give it to you on Friday and it's and I'll okay. give I'll write down the address and uh, good I'll uh, there'll be some steaks in the freezer <laughs> <laughs> well I don't eat meat so oh well good stay away from him that was what I was going to tell you uh, <laughs> well somebody from somebody I think works at Omaha Steaks I mean like all this steak and it's incredible wow wow uh, okay. well I'll, I yeah I mean. Uh, there won't be a lot of vegetables because it'll be two weeks from now, and I don't think I should probably leave you anything. Nah, don't worry. Don't worry about that at all. Don't worry about you know stocking <laughs> there's, there's the good fridge. Good restaurants here. Like there's, there will be coffee. Uh, let me think. Um, yeah, no, no, it's really not a problem at all. I, right. I will be no. It should bother be comfortable. Whatsoever. The cleaning lady's coming before you get there. It'll be clean sheets and everything will be cleaned. It'll be like oh. a hotel room with no furniture. With no furniture. <laughs> Actually, so there's I, yeah, one armchair. There's one armchair in front of the downstairs uh, setup. That's where actually where the Aperians are and the old uh, and the old Pioneer. And then upstairs Perfect. the Viera and the uh, Emotivas. All right. See so you I'm later, gonna... Scott. If, unless you want to stick around, you can do something at the top of the. Area. I'll stick around. All yeah, right, sure. Good. Thank you. Leo, you got a uh, Nod 32 line read here. Thank you. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So I got it all wrong. Scott will be here not next week, but the week after. If you have a question, a home theater question for Scott Wilkinson, his podcast, Home Theater Geeks, 
really great if you're in. I mean, that's for the hardcore home theater geek, aptly named. Uh, every uh, Monday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You can watch live at twit.tv or get it after the fact at uh, twit.tv slash HTG for Home Theater Geeks. Our website for the radio show, and actually there'll be a link there for that as well, is uh, techguylabs.com. James DeRuvo's writing down links and things I talk about. Puts it up there on the site. Uh, all 923 shows worth. And uh, then after the fact, my friend Josh Windish... Uh, adds video, and so you can watch the question, watch my answer, and then if you would, make uh, any additions or comments would be very helpful. Tech guy, and you, no charge, please. There's, it's always free. I'm trying to build a database of great answers to tech questions. Techguylabs.com. That's the website. You'll find there also a link to our chat room. Lots of nice people in there. Great place to go if you want to, you know, kibitz with the kids in the back of the class. And the phone number is also on the website, but I'll tell you right now. It's 8888-ASK-LEO. Back to the phones we go. Jeff in Phoenix. Hey, Jeff, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. Welcome. So you got me all excited about the new Mac. The Mac Mini and the I'm interested in the new 15-inch with Retina. Uh, yeah, that's what I have. The MacBook Pro, they made a 13 as well. Um, I was the 15 and now it's here Woohoo! Woohoo! so my question to you is where do i go to buy it it looks like it's the same price everywhere it this is will be my first Mac, it so. is i mean if you get a savings it's a very minor savings occasionally there's student stay safe discounts and so forth but my strong preference is buy it at the apple store uh they have the most knowledgeable salespeople. it's why apple has been so successful with retail because it really is the best place to buy a, an Apple device of any kind. They're and and they're very helpful, knowledgeable to help you set it up. They have classes that you can take. Uh, I just think they do. They they have shown up, and it's one of the reasons I think companies like Best Buy are struggling. They've shown up everybody else, all the other retailers. They said this is how you do it. Okay, well that was kind of my question because I didn't know where if. I'm a PC guy, and you know if you shop around enough, you can find the really great deals. But shopping yeah. Apple. When you go when you go Apple, you're you're basically giving up on price. <laughs> you're saying, okay, Apple, <laughs> it's up, to, whatever you want. Here it is. <laughs> Take me away. Um, but I gotta say, it's worth it. I have never the I have the 15 inch MacBook Pro, and it is without a doubt the best computer I've ever used. And ironically, it is probably the fastest Mac sold, faster even uh, than the Mac Pros. I have a Mac, a couple year old Mac Pro because they haven't updated those. It is fantastic, and and this is why I was a little bit disturbed or disappointed that the iPad Mini did not have a Retina display. Once you get used to a high DPI, high dots per inch display, you, it really spoils you. That's what I'm excited about. You're gonna I got love it. The photography and the video going. Oh, yeah. and, and one of the was, things you'll want to do is get a desktop wallpaper. I mean, unless you're unless you're happy with a stock wallpaper, but if, but one of the things you would want to do is get desktop wallpaper of that high resolution. Because it just looks so, so good when you see it. Um, and that I got mine from a, a site called interfacelift.com. Inter okay. And it's free, interfacelift.com. And they have a variety of uh, wallpapers, all photo photographic, but I like landscape photography as my desktop. I do, too. I, I, my own pictures will be my, uh, my ah, wallpaper. If you, if you are, that's right, you said you're a photographer. Yes. Stuff you shoot with that 5D, make sure you get it, at, uh, you know, the right resolution for the screen, and you're going to be very, very happy. Yeah. Oh, I'm in the other camp. I have a Nikon 7000. No, so. that's fine. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not fussy. <laughs> <laughs> it's plenty of dots per inch. Let me tell you. That's what I was planning yeah. on. Okay. Hey, great, Jeff. Yeah, for a photographer, Retina yep. is fantastic. You'll also want to get Retina-enabled apps. Now, Lightroom, Adobe has not yet Lightroom-enabled or uh, 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 has not yet Retina-enabled Lightroom. Uh, oh, that's what that's a I little was... disappointing. Or no, wait, I was going to Aperture. Aperture, yes, of course. Apple has updated everything, and if oh. you use Aperture, oh, you'll be so happy. Because what happens is that display does not normally run at the full resolution. It's it, it it's fourteen forty uh, by uh, what is it uh, nine ninety whatever it is uh, normally. Um, except when you do something like Aperture, then the interface stays at that lower resolution for speed, but the pictures are rendered at the full 
a DPI of the screen, and that is oh. gorgeous. You don't have to worry about uh, worry about it. It's just uh, just just accept it. They do the right thing. I was very confused when Apple started doing this Retina because uh, I thought, well, wait a minute, they're not they're not they're not at operating at native resolution. Uh, and if you do set it to native resolution, actually Apple doesn't even let you do it. You have to get a third-party app. Uh, you'll see that all the interface elements are too small to use. <laughs> so that's why. Uh, but what they use is they use sub-pixel rendering for text so that, so that they're able to make the text look super crisp. And then when they need to, uh, they, will, uh, they will use the full resolution as in aperture. And then you get every dot. It's, it is gorgeous, Jeff. You'll be super happy. Yeah, enjoy that uh, new Mac. I cannot recommend it more highly. I, now, I have the 15. I, I think the 13 inches may maybe not quite so fast. And you do need speed when you're when you're pushing, uh, I think it's a 4-megapixel four screen, something like that. You need a lot of power. That's a lot of dots. Tom in Harrisburg, PA. Hi, Tom. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Uh, hello, Leo. I, uh, I'm in the market for a uh, high-definition TV and... I used to be, just for frame of reference to narrow this down, uh, I used to be a Sony fan, but as you're aware, I guess Sony's kind of in a lot of financial difficulties, at least their display units. So I have a good you know, friend. I should be honest, all the Japanese manufacturers are, and that, so that includes Panasonic, Pioneer, Sony. Yeah, well, I have a good friend that has an LG set. And he's very pleased with it. So I'm for this purpose, I'm looking at a 47-inch LG TV. And, of course, the set makers today are making them 3D capable and, and smart. What I'd like to know, and I read some confusing articles on the Internet, does the picture quality degrade if all you're going to do is really look at 2D? I mean, I wear no. progressive. No, by it degrades when you go to 3D, <laughs> but it does not, no. So the deal is now all the high-end TVs have 3D. My TV has 3D. I'm not going to ever watch 3D. Uh, right. It doesn't even come with glasses. It's like, well, we'll throw it in. If you get a higher-end TV, it will have 3D, but you don't have to watch it. And it does not degrade in any way. It does not impact in any way the 2D picture. It's just not – it's unrelated. Uh, it's not going to – because I, I wear glasses. I could never wear glasses over glasses. Oh, I don't like 3D. I think it's a gimmick. I, I don't like it. Now, by the way, Samsung's Korean, LG's Korean, both make excellent uh, TVs. But Sharp Pioneer, Pan, Package Pioneer is out of the TV business, but Sharp Panasonic and Sony, yes, yeah, they're all struggling because uh, uh, they can't sell these things. I think you'll be fine with an LG. If you like it, go for it. Don't hesitate. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. And I guess I could let Scott Wilkinson weigh in on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you take it over, Scott. Sure, I'd be happy to. 3D doesn't impact 2D. No. In fact, generally speaking, if you get a TV with 3D capabilities, it's, it's going to be a higher-end TV, and you're going to get better 2D. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Performance. So you were exactly right in your yeah. response. Yeah. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I, you know, I have, no, I, have, I have no inclination to try out the 3D, although I have a, a, my, my Blu-ray player is a Sony uh, uh, PlayStation, so I guess I can play 3D from that. And oh, I'm not. I, I, yeah, I, I think there's an upgrade I, to it. Is there an upgrade, a firmware update? Yeah. Hey, listen, I wanted to ask you, um, I was going to talk about the calibration of your system, if if you will allow me oh, to yeah, do so. Oh, yeah, of course. I got no privacy. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm going to have, uh, on the, on November 19th, my Home Theater Geeks podcast on, on that Monday, I'm going to stick around and do it from the studio. Um and, in fact, I'm going to have, as my in-studio guest, Robert Heron. Oh, great. I love Robert. Robert's great. And uh, a lot of people have been saying, you guys should get together. Yeah, and, and yeah. He's my old friend, and he's doing the same thing as you are, really. Exactly. Well, a similar thing. Yeah. Um, in, uh, and so I, he's in the Bay Area, so I thought I'd have him over. And uh, I thought if it's okay with you, I would share the results of the calibration Please do. Uh, we, I'd love that. You, can you talk got about two different sets: an older uh, Pioneer Elite and an, and a newer uh, Panasonic Viera. You've got two different receivers: a Denon and a uh, Onkyo. You've got two different speaker systems: a Parian and a Emotiva. So you've got some real stuff to play with there. That's right, and yeah. the projector too, right? Uh, I haven't set up the projector. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it's only going to be the two flat panels. That's I mean, fine. I guess you could. I guess I. Could. The problem is hanging the screen. I haven't done that yet. Oh, if you haven't hung the screen yet, I I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, stay away from it. Uh, you don't want to. And, you know, the truth is that I have the old Epson um, uh, 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 movie projector, 
And yeah, which is good, I'm sure. It's fine, but it's old. I mean, it's you know, it's I don't know. It and you could get it. You could get a much newer one, probably a much better one, uh, for not that much. Right. Right. So, Kyle, so, you know that Scott's not next week, but the week after, right? Yeah, yeah. That it. wasn't Thank a surprise you. to you, just to me. <laughs> and I wanted to know, whenever you get a chance, if what else I need to record. I've recorded and put on the um, share file. Have you been able to see the share file? No, I never got that. I'll send you another. Uh, I'll send you another uh, link once I've got everything up there. But I have recorded on that now. Radio networks. Let me tell you what I've got, so you can make those calculations. Share file, premiere, Leo pre-records. I have um, a Chris Marquardt segment three, or maybe it's a, it's a nine thirty one. So I guess that's a segment three. Two Gizwiz segment threes and a Scott Wilkinson segment three. So I have four segment threes. And I have three segment ones. And I'm going to do three more segment ones right after the show today. So it seems like you're two segment threes short. And then I guess we recorded all the twos and fours. You don't need me for any of those, right, Leo? Nope, I'm good. I good. figured they're going to have enough Scott Wilkinson uh, the following. Yeah, right. <laughs> I need to double up. More than them. enough. Yeah. Oh, I did a Marquardt, a Wilkinson, and a couple of Gizwizes, one seven. for Saturday, one for Sunday. And I did three segment ones and I uh, for the first day. Three three first segments for the first day, and I'll do three more for the second day. Actually, I'm glad you're doing the second weekend. I was thinking, oh, why did we why did we have Scott do it so because it would be better for me to do talk about something it's more topical because I have to pre record. Then, ah, right. It'll way, be more if, topical by it, yeah. Next, if anything horrible happens, you can at least talk about it. You know, right? Exactly. <laughs> Yahoo goes out of business. Or something. Leo Laporte, the tech yeah, right. We'll begin at six minutes past the hour. Wow, I look pretty blown out in your monitor. Well, I wonder. It's just a setting. You don't look blown out on the screen. No, you look okay, perfect. Good. Actually, you look. Better, oh yeah, that looks that looks better, better. than you should. <laughs> see better than I do under other circumstances. Yeah, Oh, yeah, you're in standard, you see. That's the problem. I gotta... I'm standard deaf. Yeah, that's all I have right standard now. Standard picture mode. i got to put you in uh, movie mode. Now you look good. There you go. Yeah, you look so much better. The tech guy. We'll be oh, look at that. See? Movie mode is the answer to all your problems. Well, it isn't. Some hosts, I need to put them in a brighter mode. Uh. <laughs> but now, look how good that looks. It just looks beautiful. looks like you're sitting yeah. right next to me with a giant head. <laughs> anyway, let me, let me give you the uh, con, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, sure. So, uh, so yeah, chat room. Uh, I've got any questions? Let her rip. Um, the uh, on the show. By the way, just while you're if you're queuing something up, uh, I saw a special preview screening of Rise of the Guardians last week, uh, which is the the new DreamWorks animated movie coming out November twenty first. I'm going to have the director Peter Ramsey on as a special guest on the tech guy when I'm on you know, the weekend of the 17th and 18th. And I have to tell you, this movie looked fabulous. I mean, the the animation is gorgeous. It's 3D. DreamWorks, Jeffrey Katzenberg at 3D at uh, DreamWorks has said that all of their movies going forward are going to be in 3D. Uh, so you don't have to see it in 3D, of course. I'm sure it'll be available in 2D as well. But the 3D was awesome. I mean, it was very, very effective. It was not intrusive. It did not break the uh, illusion at all. And the graphics are just stunning, absolutely stunning. So I do highly recommend it. Uh, interesting story, actually, uh, based on some children's books uh, written by a guy who was inspired by his daughter coming to him and saying, Daddy, do Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny know each other? <laughs> <laughs> and so this guy, William Joyce is his name, uh, decided to write a whole series of children's books about how Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy and all these characters actually know each other and end up being the guardians of childhood, innocence and joy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <clears throat> and so that's what this movie is about. There is an evil presence who comes to try to give kids nightmares and steal their innocence and their belief in the magical and the whimsical and the wonderful. And uh, the guardians, who are Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy and the Sandman and the Easter Bunny, voice, <laughs> Easter Bunny's voiced by Hugh Jackman, very good. Uh, Santa Claus by Alec Baldwin in a Russian accent, very good. 
um, uh, Jack Frost by Chris Pine, the guy who played young Kirk in the new Star Trek movie. Uh, so uh, anyway, that it, it's a wonderful movie. I, I highly recommend it. I think it was really, really nice. I saw it at an arc light. Uh, and an arc, arc light theaters, unlike most other commercial theaters, use active glasses, which means th there's less light that gets to your eyes. Through the I don't know if I'm back or no, I'm not. I'm just playing movie music. Never mind. Kyle, you're confusing me. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're I scaring didn't, me. I didn't know if you had it up or not. I was like, uh, Rise of the Guardians. Since, uh, since oh, excellent. I'm going to ask for some of that while, when I'm... I should talk about the election, shouldn't I? You're tuned to Premier Channel 7. Hey, Leo. Leo yeah. Leo the tech guy. We'll begin Do you still have the, uh, the notes, Premier your Leo. notes up? For All what? I was going to say was, because I got down most of what you said, uh, the only thing I'm really missing here is um, the segment ones. I've got six segment ones and then three segment threes but then you mentioned a bunch of stuff i have recorded segment four three. segment threes okay. and i have recorded three segment ones and planning to record another three so it sounds like you uh, got more than, more than that's way more than you need yeah let, we'll, we'll finalize it at the top of that good, good. thank you thanks scott thanks leo see you in a couple have of a weeks great. thank you take care Well, a good day to you. Hour two of the Tech Guy Show. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy here. Time to talk about anything on your mind as long as it has a chip in it. Computers, the internet, cell phones, home theater, gadgets and gizmos galore. We've been talking a little bit about the iPad mini. I like it. I'm going to be using this, I think, instead of the, well, now what do you call the iPad Maxi? That doesn't sound right. Uh, the the, uh, the full-sized iPad uh, on my trip because it's just a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. But one thing I would say, and the, hey, Apple, I, you know, I have a love-hate thing with Apple, as you probably gathered, because some some of the stuff they do is just brilliant and wonderful, and I am, I'm a big fan of the iPad. They, they came into a market that uh, had already rejected tablet PCs for 10 years. You know, Microsoft started pushing tablets touchscreen PCs in 2000 and never got any traction. And Apple just waltzed in in 2000, uh, I guess it was 2010, and said, well, how about this? <laughs> and they've sold, what was it, 100 million of them. Uh, so I love it. But then they also sell for an exorbitant cost, given what it does, this smart cover. Now, I have a smart cover on my uh, regular iPad, and it's fine. But I cannot recommend the smart cover for the Mini. It's just ridiculous. It's too wobbly. It doesn't. The magnet isn't doesn't stay on. It doesn't stay folded. It's just a. There's got to be a better solution. Now, if you're a big smart cover fan, I guess it's okay. But it just keeps falling off and falling over. I just I don't like it. <laughs> Save yourself. What do they, What do they charge on this thing? Like forty bucks for this piece of plastic with some uh, with some magnets in it. Not a fan of the uh, smart cover. Uh, I bought it because, well, you know, that's what you do, isn't it? Apple's no fool. When you, It's just kind of like automatic. Buy an iPad? Well, of course you want the smart cover. <laughs> You're not a fool, are you? Only a fool would buy an iPad without a smart cover. They even kind of make it, you know, like part of the purchase. Uh, can't recommend it. Can't recommend it. I'm very interested in Apple's also selling this thing called the Hue lights. Have you heard about these from Philips? Whoa, they're expensive, uh, and they're not they're sold out right now. Two hundred bucks for the starter pack, which is three light bulbs. Okay, that's a lot, but they are LED, which means they're not going to burn out very fast, right? LED tends to last a long time, and the idea of these Hues is that you control them with your iPhone <laughs> or your iPad. And there's some really interesting features. For instance, you, it, it, I guess there are RGB uh, LEDs in there because they can be programmed for any color. 
That's why I figure they must have red, green, and blue in it, right? So you could take a picture of, of a color you really liked and have the hue light bulbs change to that color. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. What an interesting idea. I'm, it's too bad it's 200 bucks for three light bulbs. I'm tempted. You know me. <laughs> I'm tempted. You get for the 300 bucks, you get uh, three light bulbs, a bridge, which is a, what is connected to the hue, power supply for the bridge, and a network cable to connect the bridge to your router. So you got to have a nearby router, I guess. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll buy it so you don't have to. That's my job. That's At least that's that's what I tell my bookkeeper. Gary Redondo Beach, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Gary. Hi, how are you, Leo? I'm well. How are you? Oh, just fine. Before I get to my question, I just wanted to uh, thank you for all of the uh, help you've given me over the years on computers. Well, my pleasure. I love doing it as it gives me an excuse to buy stuff like those light bulbs. Well, I ended up, when I first started college in 1959, I took my first computer class. And then a professor, uh, a few years later, when I was starting graduate school, started this new department called computer science. So I ended up getting my minor in computer science. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Now, it would have probably been on big mainframe computers, right? Yeah, IBM 360. 360s using Fortran or COBOL? Grand. Amazing, yeah. Although you know the skills you learn uh, have it, it, they're still they're still valid. It's still the same basic idea. Microprocessors no different than the CPUs of those big three seventies. A little more powerful now, a lot more memory. Yeah, storage. Yeah, so well, it's really been helpful listening to you to be able to keep up on Good. the computers. Well, my pleasure. What can I yeah. do for you today? Well, my question is, I heard you uh, raving about the, the Note Two. So I uh, ordered an unlocked one. Ooh, on the good, all right. I got here, and I took it down. I was assuming you know, I could use it just about anywhere. I take it down to my Verizon store, and they say, sorry, we can't no. use it. Yeah. One up because it's only for AT&T. It's GSM. So there, unfortunately, in the U.S., there are two different uh, technologies for cell phones. There's the old original CDMA, and that's what Sprint and Verizon uses. And then there's the more standard GSM. T-Mobile, as well as AT&T, use GSM. And you can use your Note 2, your unlocked European Note 2 on T-Mobile or AT&T. I use it on AT&T, but you won't get LTE. You'll get HSPA+, Plus, which I think is fine. But here's the good news. If you can get that returned, because Verizon, I'm sure they told you this, plans to offer the Galaxy Note 2 on its network. So you, ha if you can't return it, then you then you got to go to AT&T and, and get an account and a SIM for it. If you can, yeah. if you can, then it, then it would, frankly, I'd prefer it on Verizon because uh, their LTE network is so fast. Yeah, that might be the thing, because I've, I've had uh, for, uh, t mobile here at my place. home, yeah. Sprint, and neither one of them work here because we're, we're blocked by a hill yeah. here. And, so you do and need, then you need Verizon. Go to Verizon. Yeah. Can you get your? Can you return the phone? Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I can do that. I Amazon's even... pretty good about that. Amazon. That's one good reason to buy from Amazon is they're uh, as long as it's directly from Amazon, they're very good about returns. Okay, I'll do that then. I appreciate your uh, help. Yeah, my apologies. I, sh I should have been more clear uh, about that, Gary. Yeah, because I, I travel so much. that. Uh, well, that's the problem is that Verizon does not work. The, the CDMA phones do not work in most of the rest of the world. There's only a few places where you can use CDMA, Japan, Canada, I think Mexico. Yeah. Uh, but you go to Europe, and it's all GSM. Now, Verizon does sell world phones. In fact, interestingly enough, the new iPhone 5 is is a very good world phone because it is a CDMA phone, but it has a SIM card for GSM, and it's unlocked. So if you got to England, for instance, you could pick up, they sell for, uh, I think, 20 pounds, a, uh, a, a card from, a SIM card from three that you could put in a cell phone in Great Britain and get unlimited data for 20 pounds for a month, which is a great deal. So... Um, 
it's, it, I'll tell you, you know, I'm going to Australia and I'm absolutely bringing, well, I'm, I'm bringing the Galaxy Note 2 because I love it. It's really almost a tablet. The thing is five and a half inches and very fast. By the way, you, you talked about your System 360, the old IBM mainframe you used. Uh, I have to, I'll have to look it up, but, uh, this is the the Galaxy Note is quad core. I think it's 1.5 or maybe even 1.7 gigahertz. Four processors running at 1.5 gigahertz plus two gigabytes of RAM. It's an astounding. The the power in this is probably exceeds that of a a thousand IBM system 360s together. <laughs> it's it's just remarkable how far we've come. But there's no Fortran on this, so that would be a little bit of a disadvantage. Gary, thank you. I'm sorry if I misled you. I, I I do like this phone, but it is designed for GSM networks. If you buy an unlocked phone, that's almost always the case. If you want to run on Verizon, you got to get it from them. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. And don't buy the white case because it's silly looking. I gotta see. I wonder it if there's the, a. Uh, I wonder if there's a. Um, let me see. Um, benchmark, mega flops. For the system, what do you say? Three hundred and sixty. I would love to know how much. What you know? How many flops it could go. 1964, the System 360. Yeah, there's no... I just, you know, if what you want is some sort of apples-to-apples apples comparison, like, um, oh, it could do, you know, three mega flops. Let me see if I could do uh, IBM's mega flops, which is million floating point operations per second. Ah, here we go. Speed of computers. Look at this. This is great. What a great website. V-I-R-T-A-C. O-R-E okay. Yeah. Verticor. There is no doubt about it. 360. Oh, good. I will. I'll mention that on the air. Oh, I love stamps.com. With stamps.com, you buy and print official U.S. postage. That's fine. Your computer and printer whenever you need it. On demand, 24-7. No more wasting time. I'm sure you'll figure it out. <laughs> PDP-10. Plus, Stamps.com customers receive special discounts on mailing and shipping. You can't even get it at the post office. Raw speed. Priority mail, express mail, and... I would love no to know what the raw speed... Have already printed over $3 billion in postage. Get a little yeah. bit of yours with my no-risk trial. Use my name, Leo. Floating oper point operations per second. That's what I want. Flops. Okay, a 360 is what? 19.2 mega flops. Okay. And now, how many mega flops... Is a uh, Galaxy Note 2. Does anybody know that? The tech guy, eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. So we did. Uh, thank you to the chat room. Uh, yeah, just don't stand there. That's good. Thank you. I'll take it. Uh, thank you to the chat room <laughs> uh, for uh, the little calculation here. The uh, IBM System Three Hundred and Sixty computer uh, from nineteen sixty-four was nineteen point two. Million floating point operations per second. That's pretty fast. That's pretty good. It's about one tenth the speed of a Galaxy Note 2. And of course, with the extra, with two gigabytes of memory, <laughs> you've got 10. Oh, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. You got 10 gigaflops in your pocket. Okay. <laughs> it's one one thousandth. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> So my phone is a thousand times faster, but it doesn't have Fortran. 
it's kind of meaningless because you're not doing the same things. And in fact, many of the things that you do on a, on a smartphone take so much more CPU power uh, to do, you know, even just a video game, a thousand times faster. That's kind of cool to think about that. And two gigabytes of memory. I mean, two gig. I remember, I mean, in my short lifetime, being a young, the young man that I am, <clears throat> I remember when it was a big deal that you could get a two gigabyte hard drive with a computer, with a Windows machine. That was a big deal. Th this phone has two gigabytes of memory, RAM. And then I think it's got uh, 16 gigabytes of internal storage. You can add another 64 of an SD card. I mean, really, seriously. The, the phones nowadays are more powerful than supercomputers of just a decade ago. It's quite amazing. Two gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage. <laughs> and uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, it was $600. It was expensive. <laughs> amazing. $2,000 for a gateway PC with a two gig hard drive, says Stormbringer in 1999. Price and performance, just, uh, it's amazing. The price has plummeted. The performance has skyrocketed. 8888 ask Leo. We're talking tech. 8888 ask Leo. That's the phone number if you have a question, a comment, a suggestion. I love talking about this stuff with you. Our website is techguylabs.com. Uh, Jason in Maryland is next. Hey, Jason, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. How are you doing? Well, I'm great. Welcome. Okay. Um, can I say two things before we get to my question? You may indeed. Okay. One, when are you guys coming back to Maryland? Well, it's been a while. <laughs> we were in Towson. Patrick Norton and I signed a um, designed autographs in Towson, Maryland, in what was that, 2002? Um, I think I remember you when you went to Brundle Mills. Oh, yeah, that's right. When was that, 2003? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm due back. Yeah. I love I love Maryland, actually. And I, and I, now when's, the, when's, when's soft shell crab season? Because that's when I'm coming. I'm um, not really sure because they've been having a hard time for that. Oh, dear. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sure the storms don't help. Yeah. Okay, that was question one. So, as soon as I can, I will come back and say hi. You know, you can always come out here. We have an open studio at Tech Guy Labs, and we often have a live studio audience. You're always welcome to visit. Uh, we do shows all week long uh, in Northern California, in Petaluma. That. Yeah, we, I love to show it off. I'm very proud of what we've done here. Question two. All right, question two is, the, the one car is talking about headsets. Yeah. Um, Log, Log, Logitech H800, they work for Mac and BC. It's ah, that's good. The li is, is, that's the Clear Chat 800? Uh, I think so. All right. Yeah, I, I'm always a little uh, hesitant because not all Logitechs work. Now, that's a wireless headset, and I'm not a big fan of wireless um, so, again, I'm going to stand by my recommendation. They're not expensive. The Plantronics Dot Audio USB headset, The uh, I think it's 655 is about 40 bucks, and you get great audio. Most of our uh, hosts, we just, you know, when we, we get a guest on the show, we say, what do you got? And they'll say, well, I was going to use my iPhone earbuds, and we say, no, <laughs> you may not. Give me your address, and we'll FedEx you the Logitech uh, 655. They're just, they really sound good. $27 at Amazon. Thank you, Toad Sloth, in our chat room. All right, what's your question, Jason? Okay, I have a Nexus 7. I have a few other tablets. Um, when the storm went out, we lost power. I don't have a generator. But I also have a eight, um, ATI Autumn Wonder TV tuner USB card. Yeah. And I want to know if would it ever work when a Nexus or the new Windows tablet came out. That's an interesting question. Um, I doubt it would work on the Nexus. You'd need drivers for it to work. It might work on a Windows machine, and the, and the Windows Surface tablet is a Windows machine. Probably not RT, but Windows 8 Pro might with Media Center. Uh, definitely not on the Nexus 7 would be my guess. It's a, it's a driver issue. You know, you, it's USB, so the physical interface is compatible. But what the computer does with the data it gets over the physical interface is is uh, is the issue and uh, unless the computer understands what it's talking to that's what a driver is by the way driver is just a little bit of software that says okay you're going to see this thing on the USB port it calls itself you know the uh, the TV tuner 
Here's how you talk to it. Here's the kind of data you're going to get from it. And here's what to do with it. That's what a driver does. And so uh, same thing for that Logitech uh, 800. you, you got to have a driver. You could physically connect it, but that's not enough. Now, it's a little confusing because there are standard drivers for things like keyboards and mouse. Uh, cameras, too, often. So many devices come with a standard driver that you could plug in uh, a mouse. or, For instance, on the Surface tablet, it does have a standard USB port. So I plug in a mouse or a keyboard, it's going to work. It may not have all the features available if it's a specialized mouse or keyboard, but it will work as a basic HID or human interface device. That's the driver. Um, so there are, there's always a driver, always a driver. Computers don't know nothing unless you tell them. The question is, does the computer already have a driver or can you find one that works? And that, you know, just depends. Um, Windows 8 will almost certainly, the Pro, and this is, by the way, get ready, because I'm going to have to do this for the next five or six years. I'm going to have to distinguish the Windows RT, which is the tablet version of Windows 8, from Windows 8 Pro, which is a desktop operating system. Windows 8 Pro is very much like Windows 7. It will run whatever Windows 7 will run, including that tuner card, and I'm certainly a mouse and a keyboard. Windows 8 RT, well, all bets are off. It has a very limited set of drivers. I'm sorry that to, uh, to hear about your uh, troubles with the uh, boy. I just uh, so many of our our viewers uh, and listeners are, uh, you know, just suffering through great challenges, uh, unfortunately, due to Sandy. So take care, uh, stay safe, and I guess it's uh, it's going to get better. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. Harold is in North Carolina. You're our next caller. Hi, Harold. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. Hey. I've got a problem with a, a home-built computer I uh, built about five or six months ago. Okay. Right. Oh, hang on. I hear the magic music telling me we're going to take a break. You will be next, Harold, when we come back. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the web's, uh, the phone number. Website's techguylabs.com. Leo Laporte here. Dr. Mom still does not have power after five days. Hmm. Yeah, this I have two more cases on order, but they're not going to come in time. Uh, you know, I, the only reason I put a case on here is so I don't break it. This is just a. I don't know if this is a. This is just a. Uh, you know, trying to make money site. Now these are all crappy cases. This is what I have, but they didn't. They only had white, I guess. I've got a black one coming. I'll show you what I bought. I'm very excited about it, but it's not going to be here for weeks. It's a nice leather, nice leather case. I did get. I'm really happy. The extra battery in the charger, so I've got uh, two batteries for the note. The note goes at least at you know 13 or 14 hours on a battery charge so, uh, even more depending on how you use it i'm leo laporte the tech guy so you hear that clonk my ipad mini falling over again <laughs> i just don't like this this smart case it's got you know maybe it's because i'm comparing it with the surface rt which has this click you know kickstand and it's just really solid i mean you can you know that's a solid stand and the ipad mini just falls right over you know, I'm trying to play The Simpsons uh, tapped out, and every time I tap it, the thing go wobbles. That's no good. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's my number if you have a question, a comment, a suggestion. Um, we were talking to Harold before the break, and I had to abruptly cut him off. Sorry, Harold. Oh, that's all right. What can I do for you? Okay. Uh, we ready to go? Yeah, what can I do for you? Right. Yes, I, I, I was saying uh, I have a, a home-built uh, desktop um, that I built five or six months ago that I used for my video work and also for my Plex server. And um, I am getting a, a, a system beep, and I cannot figure out where it's coming from or what's called. When, when do you get the beep? All the time? No, mostly when I'm doing uh, uh, video work, either when I'm uh, 
uh, rendering using handbrake to uh, back up a DVD, um, or sometimes even just playing a high def uh, HD uh, YouTube video. Well, that's annoying because you yes, don't, you know, the last thing you want to do is hear a beep. No. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I can give you some of my components. No, no, uh, that's not necessary. Okay. Um, I have run a, a, a diagnostic on the memory. It's not the memory. My, my, you know, this is the issue with building your own is that uh, there's nobody you can call, is there? Just uh, you. Just me. <laughs> it's just one <laughs> beep, just a little boop. No, it's more of a, a 10 second beep. A long uh, beep. Oh, that's an alarm. And I would guess almost certainly it's a temperature alarm. Um, sometimes uh, about the highest it's gotten has been about 60, 65 degrees Celsius. Well, that's, that's pretty hot. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's uh, that's very hot. Is oh. that is that the motherboard temperature or is that the, uh, the CPU? Well, modern CPUs get pretty hot. Sixty five is pretty hot. Now I've got quite a few fans on it, uh, but I do just have the stock uh, uh, heat sink. Uh, I'm anticipating. Uh, yeah, no, I think you're all right. Sometimes when you build your own computer, the one issue is you might put, believe it or not, either too little or too much thermal paste on the uh, fan. You put a fan on the CPU, or did it come with one? It, it came pre-applied. Ah, good. Much less likely to have a problem, although even at the factory, they can misapply the thermal paste. Yeah. 69, <coughs> excuse me, 65 degrees is not too bad. No. A, uh, or do the... Uh, AMD FX 8120s have a, a, a problem mm. overheating? or? Well, um, I'm not familiar with their temperature range. This certainly would be within the range for an Intel chip, so I think it's probably all right. What I would do is look at your BIOS settings. Okay. You probably in BIOS settings have a setting for the temperature alarm. Yeah, it's an Asus motherboard, so it has the... Yeah, uh, so you go in the, in the BIOS, and in all likelihood, that's what that sound is. And it's, it makes sense, given what you just told me. <clears throat> when would it get hottest? Well, when it's rendering videos or playing back HD video. Yeah. So my guess is that it is, uh, It's you know, if it gets too hot, it shuts down. So yeah. it's not saying, it's a warning, not a, you know. But uh, so what you oh, probably what could doing. turn, You could if you can change the setting in BIOS, which I think you probably can, I would turn it up, make it 70 or 75 degrees centigrade. No higher than that, though. 65 is really at the... That's why you're getting a warning in a normal situation. That's something to be concerned about. But given that you are really running it when you're rendering video or you're watching an HD video, you're working that sucker. Um, that's why it's so hot. I would I would check, make sure your fans have clean line of sight to the CPU. You know, sometimes when you put wiring in there, blocks of fans. Make sure when you build your own. By the way, this is exactly why I don't really recommend building your own. You don't save any money. You have the issue of, well, who do you call if there's a problem? Nobody is the answer because uh, the motherboard's from one company, the fan's from another, the CPU's from another. You can't. There's no one to call. They'll blame each other. And finally, um, you could put it together in a, such a way that it's got little issues like this. For instance, uh, if you didn't keep those wires you know, well trimmed and out of the way, the cooling wouldn't work. You want to make sure that as you put in the fans that they're properly configured. And when a Dell designs a computer, they spend a lot of time designing airflow in the case. The fans in front blow, the fans in back suck. They draw the, the air through the case. If you, put, if you put the fans both pointing in, blowing into the case, guess what? You're, all you're doing is creating turbulence, not cooling. All of these things uh, experienced PC manufacturers handle. But when you do it yourself, eh, you get things like... When the computer works hard, it beeps at you for 10 seconds. That's exactly why I generally tell people, don't build your own computer. There's no, the only reason, and and, and Harold might be completely legitimate reason for you to do this, is because you want to pick each and every component. And you want to learn how it all works together. You want to be able to uh, service it, because guess what? <laughs> that's, that's what you're learning, <laughs> how to service it, because no one else is going to help you. Um, it's a great learning experience. <laughs> That's what the chat room's telling me. <laughs> That's code for you. <laughs> uh, you've got the bruises to show it. Uh, I, my, my suggestion would be that uh, you could turn, you could not nudge those alarm warnings up a little bit, but don't do too much because you really don't want it to run much hotter than that. 
you can look up and it, uh, it's simple Google. Just look up the AMD CPU that you have, and it's uh, it's rating, it's thermal rating, and they'll tell you how hot it should get, and and you don't want it to get any hotter than that. And I admire you, Harold. I admire your gumption for doing that yourself. Doug in Arizona, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Doug. Hi, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. Good to talk to you. Thanks. Hey, listen, I have two specific questions, um, and I'm hoping they'll be easy for you, but they're way over my head. Um, I have a an old digital camera I need to replace, and I just need a recommendation toward a... Uh, uh, a simple, reliable point-and-shoot digital camera. It must have a good macro feature because I do clock and watch repair, and I do I photograph, oh, neat. and I do uh, I take pictures of little screws and little uh, gears that are maybe no more than uh, an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch in diameter. How fun! So I need to I need to be able to uh, accurately render those. So how how uh, uh, so? What's your budget and uh, how compact uh, does it have to be? Are there are there issues like that? Do you want to be waterproof, compact? What what other features are you looking for? Macro, I got. Okay, okay macro, um, easy to operate. I am not an I am no Ansel Adam. Yeah. I have no aspiration. <clears throat> but, uh, to be a super effed up <laughs> guy. So you don't, you don't want to, uh, I, I gather, you don't want a digital SLR. Uh, no. Yeah, no. Heaven heaven forfend. Yeah, I, I need, it to, need to keep it, I'd say, around 200 200 bucks. Um, Ooh, I'm yeah, glad you told me that. Yeah, and, uh, well, maybe I could go up a little bit, but not much. <clears throat> we, and we travel. So we take it. We take family pictures, scenery photos, things like that. Yeah. And that's my camera question. Yeah. I also have a computer file question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Any thoughts? Or? Well, I was going to suggest the Nikon P7000, which is my friend oh. Andy Anotko does a lot of reviews. It's a Coolpix camera. It's a little more. It's under 300 though. And just amazing image quality. Uh, let's talk a little more when we come back. We all the boy, the tech guy. 8888, ask Leo. That's the phone number. We're, we're talking before the break with a watchmaker, which I love, Doug in Arizona. He needs to take pictures of little teeny tiny screws and gears. Yeah, little bitty tiny things. Little uh... bitty, bitty, witty things. So most good point and shoots now have... Decent macro. I mean, the best macro, of course, is going to be with an interchangeable lens, a macro lens. But oh, I'm going to give you – but you don't want something that elaborate. I am going to well, say that no, you should spend a little more, maybe 300 instead of 200 Okay. Well, maybe I should tell you what I was getting by on until it died yesterday. It was a Fuji uh, Fine Picks. A340. Yeah, no, I like the fine picks. I have owned many fine picks. Fuji makes great stuff, and you could get another Fuji, actually. They're very good cameras. Uh, the Nikon, now it's now the P7100. They've come out with the newest one, but my friend Andy Anako, who is a great photographer, he writes for the Chicago Sun Times, raved and, may, and actually bought the P7000. He loved that one. Uh, another, I, another recommendation, strong recommendation, uh, is the uh, Canon. PowerShot S100. The current version is the S110. PowerShot. PowerShot S100. Really yeah. excellent camera. 100. I'm a fan of the Canon uh, SLRs, and I think that their point and shoots are very good as well. Oh, okay. What was the first recommendation, please? That was the Nikon P, as in Paul, 7000. The current one's a 7100, but you can still get the 7000, and you save by getting the you know, the older oh. version. Okay, I got you. Now, the chat room is telling me they really like, and it's under $200, the Canon PowerShot SX160. Uh, it's under 200 bucks. So, it, 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 you know, PowerShot, what, what one, number? 160. Okay, uh, it, it, PowerShot, there's a letter, 160. PowerShot no. SX160, oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. You don't have to write this down. We'll put this all in the show notes for you, and 
You'll find links to all three. I'm looking on Amazon at the PowerShot SX160 from Canon. 16 megapixels, wide angle, 179 bucks. So it may be that the truth is you don't have to pay more than 200 bucks. Uh, I would check on the specs to see if it does support macro photography. Um, they, they, the cameras, digital cameras, have gotten so good. And uh, 999 really likes in our chat room the XZ1 from Olympus. So, James, write all those down, okay? The XZ1 from Olympus. All good. All good cameras. Um, the difference in between a point and shoot and a larger SLR or even a micro four thirds camera is the size of the sensor. Uh, that uh, besides the interchangeable lenses, which is fa you know will make a difference for macro photography certainly, but the size of the sensor, a bigger sensor gives a better image quality, does better in low light too. Um, looks like looks like um, looks like almost any point and shoot that you get is going to have a decent macro, and uh, including that Olympus, that sounds like a good choice too. Now I'm giving you more choices than you probably wanted. Web 2345 likes the SX160. That's from Canon. It does have macro. Uh, macro. What macro photography is, is the ability to shoot something at actual size, in effect. What They call it one-to-one. -one. So if you're shooting a picture of a screw, <clears throat> you can get close enough that the screw is actually, actu is actually uh, full size on, this, on, the, on the image. That's macro photography, one-to-one. -one. They are pointing me, and I do recommend you do this, to a, a, a couple of websites uh, for camera reviews. I love DP Review, Digital Photography Review, dpreview.com. I would certainly look there. Also, uh, digitalcameraInfo.com. Good, two good places to go for online reviews. As long as you understand, they generally uh, cater to the enthusiast crowd. So when it comes to point-and-shoots and less expensive cameras, they may be a little dismissive. Un, un, unnecessarily so, I think. They're really, they've gotten quite good. Doug in, uh, well, we were just talking to Doug in uh, in Arizona. Oh, he had another question, actually. Let me, uh, you were asking about carbonite. Yeah, hi, I had, I was hoping you to get to my other question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, regarding carbonite, I tried the two-week trial. I loved it, paid for it, got it, and I'm I'm just blown away by it. However, I have an issue with some of my digital image, uh, my uh, digital uh, pictures. I've got so many of them. I discovered that some of them are, are, are backing up and others are uh, refuse to be backed up. I got on their tech site, or I should say uh, on their live chat, customer support. Turned out the issue is some of my digital files uh, my uh, um, uh, uh, JPEG image files are classified as a temporary file or a system file. And all I have... Of course, Carbonite doesn't want to back up either of those. No, they don't. It doesn't. But somehow, I have no clue, and it's almost irrelevant how it happened. The fact is that it did happen. Um... Some, I mean, sometimes within one folder, some are are are, are fine yeah. and they're backed up. Others are not. All I have to do is open them with a with a, a photo editor, rename it to something. So I have my finger hovered over the letter X, and I save as with the keeping the same file number with a a little letter X on the end of it, and then it and delete the original. And it's fine, but but there's so many. Is there a way I can select a bunch of them at a time and bulk uh, make them, you know, in bulk make them not a system file, or do I have to, or or do I have to go one by one by yeah, one? Yeah, there by are there are quite a few batch file uh, changing batch <laughs> mode file permissions changing <laughs> things. And in fact, I think, as I remember, you could even do it uh, by shift clicking. Um, so let me let me find you uh, uh, the easiest way uh, to do this. I'm sure that ch uh, the chat room is suggesting something called bulk rename utility. Uh, you're on Windows, I presume. Of course you are. 
Yeah. Win- yeah, Windows 7. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there there are quite a few of these programs that will let you just kind of go file renamer, basic. I would try bulk rename utility. Most of them will allow you to also change the file type. And that's what's happening is for some reason the file type is is kind of changing to something that it shouldn't be. Uh, oh. I'm not sure why. I would actually be more concerned about why it's happening because it's going to presumably continue to happen. Which... Well, I don't know, but I will tell you that my folder, uh, everything is under a master folder under the C drive called Doug's folder, and under that is my MP3s and then all you know my resumes and uh, and and of course my image folders. Let me recommend uh, this is from Jojo. <laughs> I like Jojo. Oh. Jojo's freeware utilities. It's called Jojo's uh, at jojosoft.com. It's called Jojo Rename Master and this thing is a power tool and it's free, which is nice. It'll it'll rename files um I'm pretty sure it'll also what you want to do is change the system attributes or file attributes. Uh and I believe it'll change that. If since you're a photographer, you might also like the fact that you can change uh, EXIF tags, JPEG tags, MP3 tags, and more with it. It's very powerful. It doesn't even require any installation. It's JoJo Soft, J O E J O E Soft dot com. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, you could also use the command line uh, Atrib. That's right. It's kind of built in. It worries me that stuff's being renamed to temp and system. You know when you call and ask what the tech guy recommends? Yeah, it's portable because it runs off the thing. I don't know. Does it do uh, system attributes? Looks like it does. I mean, it looks like it does a lot of stuff. Yeah, there is a temp attribute and system attribute. It's a little odd. I, you know, it's something to do with... I, I don't think he really wants to... Uh, to I didn't want to get into it with the guy, but because um, he's so slow. <clears throat> but I, my, it's not file extensions. It's uh, my guess is that he doesn't want to back those files up. That he's right. That Carbonite's right not to be backing them up. That they're actually, um, you know, temp versions of of a picture that he has a, an actual copy of. He's going to get all these duplicates. In other words, I would I would guess he shouldn't be playing with that. Just my thought. I didn't want to get into it. I don't. There's not enough time. Uh, I do want to talk about ShareFile. <clears throat> Gosh, I love ShareFile. So how? In fact, let me show you because um, I need to do a ShareFile with uh, Kyle, right? So I have all of these, um, all these files uh, for the shows next week that I have to share with Kyle. So I'm gonna log into my ShareFile account. I'll just do this real quickly here. <clears throat> And you see we have it, by the way, customized. That's one of the nice things about ShareFile. It gets customized for your industry as well as your company. So we got the Twit logo and everything. I'm going to go to the Premiere folder. And I want to send uh, Kyle. <clears throat> I could send him a folder. I could just say, let me send you the whole folder. But I, actually what I want to do is uh, just send him the files in the individual files. So I'm just going to I'm gonna select all these files here. Whoops. Press the wrong button. Let's select all these files, and I'm going to press send. Now, there is an Outlook plugin. I don't use Outlook, but there's an Outlook plugin that makes it just like email. In this case, all I'm going to do is say, give me a link I can copy, and using my own email software, send. And I have all these features. This makes it fully HIPAA compliant. Things like, for instance, email when the fire has been downloaded. Check or uncheck that. Require recipients to enter name and email before downloading so you can track it. You can control how long that access applies. Like, I don't want them to use those after a month. How many times you can download them? Unlimited, one to ten. All of that then gets uh, a- attached to the file. I'm going to uncheck all of that because I want to send them. I'm just going to send them this link. Now I copy that to the clipboard. Go to my email program, and I can send that to Kyle right now. And that's going to be all the files I've I've copied already. And Kyle, you want me to send that to uh, your uh, live account? Your Boot Camp Lights account or your Premier Radio account? I'll tell you what. I'll send it to your Gmail account. DC 101 or Kyle. You get like more, more emails. Kyle Metgevenom at gmail.com. Okay, here's the tracks. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Which one? 
That's not me. That's not you? That's not you. That's the other Kyle Benham that uh, he, I guess he lives in here in L- LA. DC 101? DC 101? That's me, Kyle DC one hundred one. Okay, okay. So I'm going to send him the uh, the link, channel seven. just like that. And let me show you uh, what he gets. This is so cool. So, uh, whoops, wrong, wrong thing. Let's go here. Paste in the link. And so what he'll see is this, which is very simple. It shows him the list of files, who created them. And he has one button to download them all, or he can uncheck them and download just a few of them. Twit logo, the whole thing. This is so sweet. Share file is so much better than all the other ways to do this. Uh, you keep you keep control. It's HIPAA compliant. It's totally secure. It's from Citrix, so you know they've they've done all they've crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's. I want you to get it right now, free for thirty day or yeah, thirty days. Go to sharefile.com and use Tech Guy as the promo code, and you can uh, try it for thirty days free. I'm a big fan. It's the easiest way. I've tried them all. I've tried all those, you know, the other ones. You know which ones I'm talking about. Uh-uh. All sorts of trouble. Not share file. And when you're doing what I do, and you're sending big files, you do, I can't. I don't want. I can't come back from Australia and, and <laughs> send them again. Actually, the neat thing about share file, you can log. They have uh, smart apps, so you can see all your share file stuff. And so, actually, I, I could actually go on my phone, run the share file app. Let's see, I'll show it to you on. Uh, I have it on all my phones. <laughs> Which one? Here, I'll show you something that you can see. I'll put it on the iPad. And so I actually, this would actually be, if, if I'm in Australia and I go, oh, he didn't get them, I just launched the share file app and resend it. I don't have to have the, the file on my uh, on my iPad. So it's pretty cool. I really like it. Sharefile.com. Use Tech Guy uh, as the offer code and you will get 30 days free. One that's logged in. I have it on all my. Uh, here it is. This is on the uh, note. Oh, I have to log in. Oh, no, I don't have to. So there, same thing. You can do exactly the same thing I just did. So here's the pre records, and I could just select all of these and send them. It's so slick. Or I can go back, send them the whole file. The whole folder. Don't you love it? Really cool. Sharefile.com. I gotta update all these. Uh, I'm not gonna have much internet access on the boat, if any. So I gotta update all my apps. This is Premier Channel 7. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, will begin at six minutes past the hour from Premier Radio Network. This phone iPhone case, you hate this? It is ugly. Oh no, the white one? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's horrible. But I, I had this one for the original note, the same company, but it was black. I don't know why I got the white one. I guess because the black one but anyway, the black one's coming. But I just, it's just good to have a case of any kind. This is Premier Channel 7. Leo Laporte, and this one I'm really disappointed in the color of, too. This is the rock, rock form. And I ordered, I thought it was red, but it's kind of more to, it's more tomato. I do like the rock form. I should just order a black one. Thing is, I'm stuck with it because I'm leaving tomorrow for Australia. So I have a, a rock form for the GS3, too. These guys are not advertisers. I really should... <laughs> But they now have the Galaxy S3 uh, rock form. Channel 7. Leo and see, this is a magnet, which is awesome. We'll and then that notch yeah. hooks onto knobs. There's a variety of different things you can, the notch can hook onto. So, but I should not have bought the red. See, I should have got black and gunmetal. Instead, I got black and red. Doesn't look like that. That is not how red it is. If it were, see, I like that red. It looks like. Um, yeah, I should have. You are tuned to Premier Channel Seven. Oh, this is what I should have gotten. Pink. We'll begin at six minutes past. Uh, I should have got black and gun metal. No, just black and black, black and black, black black. That's what I should have gotten. Mm. <laughs> Me and my colors. Okay. <laughs>
<clears throat> well, a good day to you. Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk about computers, the internet, cell phones, camcorders, MP3 players, home theater, and all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO is the number. Bill in Michigan's reminding me. I think there's an election coming up, uh, isn't there, on Tuesday. Have you... Uh, I See, I voted because I'm leaving for Australia, so I did the absentee thing. And I was looking for a place to, just to get, uh, you know, kind of unbiased information. In California, we have a lot of uh, primary uh, ballot initiatives. Well, not, not primary ballot, just ballot initiatives. And I found a wonderful uh, place to do my research called Ballotpedia. And Bill in Michigan has reminded me, and I should probably mention it now, you know, uh, don't wait until you get in the ballot box to, to vote, to figure out what you're going to vote on, because you, even if you bring the pamphlet, you won't get enough information. So I was very impressed. This is kind of a Wikipedia for politics. They call it an interactive almanac of state politics. And uh, so uh, in California, we have all these ballot measures. I'm, I'm sure where you are, it's just as crazy. You click on the state, and it will show you all the measures in California, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven different propositions we have to vote on. Oh my goodness! It shows you who can't, who who donated, you know, who supported it. Showed you um, uh, the the editorials, pro and con. Gives you the official voter guide summary, fiscal impact. Arguments in favor, arguments against. It completely, seems to be completely nonpartisan. I'm very impressed by that. It's information. This is what the Internet was made to do, wasn't it? And I really love seeing who gave money to support that proposition. That gives you a lot of information about who, you know, why, who's behind this. Really useful. I've never seen anything more complete. Plus, if you want to see what the, uh, what the different newspapers uh, say, you, it's got links to that, too. You want to read the editorials. Very, very, very handy. Ballotpedia.com. Now, I presume that for the presidential election, you've probably already got enough information. It, it does have some stuff there. It's really more for members of Congress, ballot measures, state executives, state legislatures, all of the hard stuff. That's the hard stuff, right? Voting for the president, that's easy. you got the debates, you got lots of information, articles. It's the more obscure stuff that takes a lot of research and uh, really worth doing it, I think, to be an informed electorate. Nice job. Ballotpedia.com. And uh, I, should, I should actually uh, see who put this together. Originally formed by the Citizens in Charge Foundation in 2007... The Sam Adams Alliance is a chief sponsor. Their mission is to use online media to promote access to government. Official sponsor in 2009, Lucy Burns Institute, a nonprofit. Uh, but really, I think most of the information is, uh, I mean, it's really, I just think, well done. Nonpartisan, all the information you need. That's what the Internet, that's what the Internet was designed to do. 8888-ASK-LEO, uh, that's the phone number. If you have a question, a comment, a suggestion, we also have a great website of our own, techguylabs.com, where you can uh, annotate my answers. We've got the, this is so fun. So we put the the uh, show notes there right away. James is writing that down right now. And then after the fact, we take the video of the show, because we put it up on YouTube. So take the video of the show, chop it up so that you can see the question, the actual call. You can watch and listen to the actual call and my actual answer. But then, and I hope you'll do this, you can comment and you can add value to that. And that's all free, and I hope you'll take advantage of that. 8888-ASK-LEO, uh, that's the phone number. Alex in Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello. Yes. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? Welcome. I'm great. How are you? Oh, brilliant. Um, I have a qu I have actually about two questions. Um, one of the things is I've got a affordable MacBook, basically a $200 MacBook Air, and uh, I'm trying to figure out, you know, how I could connect it to my flat screen telly, which is 
uh, Ezra Samsung TV. So, and, so you have you have a MacBook Air, and you want to put the no, screen. It's, it's not actually a MacBook Air. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it on the radio, but it's a uh, Hackintosh, technically. Okay, so I, I don't know how to help you with a Hackintosh uh, because I don't know what capabilities that has. But uh, if you have Mountain Lion on a MacBook Air, you can use AirPlay to play it right onto the TV if you have an Apple TV or a TV that's compatible with AirPlay. Uh, so my recommendation, I don't think this will work with a Hackintosh. I don't know. This is the problem with making a Hackintosh, which is using uh, cheap PC hardware and then putting OS X on it, is that some things may not work quite right. I guess I don't see any reason why. It's just using Wi-Fi, I guess, right? So uh, it might be worth a try if you have Mountain Lion, the latest version of OS X on it. Um, an Apple TV, 99 bucks. Uh, will allow you to airplay without any wires the connection from the computer onto a, any any big screen TV. Uh, Air Parrot is software that you can run if you don't have Mountain Lion. You could also, depending on the PC hardware you have, and this is this is you make a physical connection. So some laptops, for instance, have HDMI out. Then it's simple; it's trivial. You just plug that in the back of the TV. You're good. Uh, so that would be one way to do it. If you have a DVI out of the laptop or a VGA out of the laptop, you'll have to get the appropriate adapter. Hook that up. Uh, Air Parrot might be the best choice for you. Take a look at that. Uh, just, just Google that and, and, and install it, and that might really solve the problem uh, the easiest. Again, it's all it's all up in the air because you're not using a Mac Apple hardware. I'm not sure... I'm not sure really what you know what capabilities of that laptop are. Airparrot.com. Um, but see, that requires an Apple TV too. So the problem is, you, you know, most TVs don't support uh, this wirelessly, but an Apple TV does. I don't know. You, you, if you if you if you uh, spent two hundred bucks on your laptop, maybe you're willing to spend another hundred bucks to get the. Uh, Get the uh, video out on the big screen. Dave in Atlanta, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Dave. Hey, how you doing, Uncle Leo? I'm great. How you doing, nephew Dave? <laughs> Pretty good. I got a question for you. I just want to shoot, like, some documentary, just like, you know, some family stuff, maybe some low-budget documentary. And uh, I'm running a PC on Windows 7. I was wondering if you had any tips for video editing uh, software. Because I'm new at this, I have no idea where to start. Uh, I'm looking probably about a range, about two fifty to spend. You don't even have to spend that much. Now there's a free solution that's not bad from Microsoft. Now I didn't used to recommend this, but Windows Movie Maker is actually not bad. You can get it. It doesn't come with your Windows PC, but you can get it if you have a late model PC at live.com. Get dot live dot com. It's called Windows Movie Maker. It's not a bad start. If you want to get a little fancier, a little nicer, and frankly use something that I think is uh, is is higher quality, under a hundred bucks, Adobe Premiere Elements. Now the pros use Adobe Premiere. That's the expensive package for video editing. A lot of movies and TV shows are made with Adobe Premiere Elements. Just like Photoshop Elements is the you know affordable version of the big boy, Adobe Premiere Elements is the affordable version of Adobe Premiere, and I think it's great, Dave. It'll it even has DVD burning capabilities and all the features that you'd want, um, and, and 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 templates and themes and everything. I think you're going to love it. Oh, okay. And I can add, like, different, um, like, multiple audio tracks and yep. do picture and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, if you want to get that fancy, to forget Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> you definitely want to get Premiere Elements. Okay, pre Premiere Elements. Yeah. Okay. The next step up from that is Sony Vegas, which is also quite good. V-E-G-A-S, like the city. Um, also very good, and that's a little more in your, you know, a little more expensive, little upper, upper, up, upper to uh, two or three hundred bucks there. The old Laporte, the tech guy. Mouth is not working. Well, don't you know that other kids are starving in Japan? So eat it, just eat it. Eat it. Don't you tell me. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 
Ask Leo. That's the number. Little weird Al to get us going here. Jim in Rialto, California. You're next. Hi, Jim. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo, I just have a question for you. I went out and ordered the, um, you know, the Note 2 to Verizon. I apparently I, am selling a lot of these Note 2s. You're the second guy today. Well, you know what? Uh, you he had an interesting, your caller had an interesting question, and it started made me think. That's why I wanted to call in. First of all, I'm jumping ship from my Apple 4S. Uh, I love the phone, but I just need something with a bigger screen real estate. So I'm with I, you. I'm with you. Once you once you go to five and a half inches, f- f- three and a half yeah. inches seems awfully small. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I really, I really could uh, be more productive with the you know with the work yeah. that I do. You know, when I'm away from the office. Well, it's able- also it's also 1280 by uh, 800. I mean, I guess this one's 720. 1280 by 720. So there's a lot of screen real estate. Yeah. So that's the reason. But yeah. you know, the question was is that. Uh, when I was ordering through Verizon, which, you know, unfortunately I have to wait till the 25th, I believe, is when it's going to get shipped back to, right. or when I'm going to get it. Right. But the thing is, is that I got a dialogue box when I was ordering it, and the dialogue box said, would you like to make this an international phone or world phone? I don't know the term they use, but, you know, Oh, that's because- interesting. Now, to my knowledge, the Ver- well, I don't know. That's, uh, you know, when you get the iPhone 5 on Verizon, it is truly a world phone. So as I was telling the guy uh, when we talked last hour, uh, the world technology, there's two things you need. You need, first of all, it to be a GSM phone. You also need it to support the GSM. Unfortunately, frequencies are not the same in every country. So it has to support the GSM frequencies of the country that you're going to. Uh, yeah. Ha- now, if it does both of those, it's, 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 uh, it's absolutely going to work. And because GSM allows you to kind of interchange the brain of the phone, but with a SIM card, you could actually buy a SIM card in the country you go to, have a local number, local data, save a lot of money. Now, Verizon, it sounds like Verizon does offer world phones. And a true world phone would be a phone that supports GSM and the frequencies and the places you're going. I don't know, because I haven't seen it, if the Galaxy Note that Verizon's going to offer will be like the iPhone 5, where it will have both CDMA and GSM. The iPhone 5 does. It has a SIM card, but it's also a CDMA phone, so it supports both. When I was ordering it, it asked me, would you like a SIM card? Great. On- Good news. That's yeah, great asked- news. I said, yes, I would. And then it said, this will give you capability as an international phone. I don't know the terminology. Man, I'm going to buy one. I, I'm going to send back this one. That's fantastic news. And I guess the guy who is listening, uh, I hope he's still listening. Um, bring it to Verizon and say, put a SIM in there. I did that with the iPhone 5, and now you can use it. There's pretty much nowhere you can't use it. Yeah, so, I mean, I was able to upgrade to the 5, but I wanted to, I wanted to wait to see when the Note 2 was going to come out because I wanted to compare. Right. I first wanted to bring the iPhone 5 because I wanted to see what they were going to come out with. But, you know, I mean... Well, I think that's exactly right. Galaxy Notes are selling like hotcakes all of a sudden, and I think... Uh, it was Samsung said we think people were waiting to see what Apple did, and then yeah. they decided to buy to buy a, a Galaxy instead. A row of icons more is not going to impress me on the screen. It's side. not a big difference. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, good news. I did not know that. I'm very pleased to hear that. Uh, that means that they're doing the same thing with the Galaxy Note that they did with the Apple iPhone five, which is that that it's a dual band phone that's great now what kind of a learning curve would it be for me to uh like for example import all of my music onto my note 2 i know i have to buy uh you don't have to buy no you don't have to buy anything okay so you already are using itunes i i do but i also have google play which i just signed up for yesterday when i I can start using Google Play right oh, away. Oh, that's fantastic. So with iTunes, that means, first of all, you want to make sure you want to uncopy protect that music. So if, if you've got DRM'd music on there, that will not copy over or, or be usable on your Note 2. Fortunately, iTunes eliminated copy protection a couple of years ago. Anything you bought recently will be fine. You can use iTunes Match to replace copy protected music with unprotected music for 25 bucks, That's probably worth it. I did that. So my entire iTunes collection is now unprotected. And then there's a free program called Double Twist that works just like iTunes. It will synchronize over the air or via cable 
if it's a big collection, start with cable, um, to your uh, Galaxy and uh, copy all the files over, and it also copy the iTunes playlists over. The only thing you'll lose are things like play counts, ratings, things like that. Okay, that's not that's not a big deal. I just want to be able to still listen to my music. And... Yeah, I mean, I uh, it's wonderful. And the nice thing about Google Play, if you've got time, uh, is you can have Google upload all your songs to the cloud, uh, and then they're all available, uh, f- you know, uh, from the cloud on your phone. So you don't even have to occupy space on the phone. Amazon does the same thing. The Amazon MP3 uh, library. You just you you'll put some software on your computer that will see all your music, match it up to the cloud, and uh, then it'll all be available. So th- uh, that's a uh, Google Music is a great deal, I think. That's that's aw- that's awesome, Ben. So that yeah. was my only question because you know i do want to have it as an international phone because i do travel but yeah, you know it's, yeah i it's wish i'd known because i bought the unlocked uh gsm version because i thought that was the one i needed for travel i did not know verizon was going to do that that's fantastic yeah so i want the lte and i want the screen size so that's why i want lte it, so. absolutely boy LT- if you're in a verizon lte area it's amazing how fast that is yeah my, all right my well, now that yep. I should warn you, you probably will not get LTE internationally. They use different frequencies. Oh yeah, no, I knew I knew that. But I mean, at least I want to be able to have you know without having to right. rent a phone or right. you know. And you probably, phone. I'll be honest, you don't want LTE internationally because the cost of international data is so high that you know you don't want to download twenty megabits a second. <laughs> that would that, you could you could spend a thousand dollars an hour easily. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Be very careful on that one. In fact, before I leave for Australia tomorrow, I will be. Uh, getting international plans on uh, all of my phones so that and, and I'll be very careful to meter my usage you can really rack up a bill wow okay good to know hey thanks Jim I, I, don't, I don't like the fact that they're taking me off uh, my unlimited data though oh they know. did that to me too they don't want to offer that any excuse uh, yep. yeah that's that's, uh, that's a bummer because I got I was, that I got that notice too yeah I thought I'd get grandfathered in or something. You know? No, they can't because LTE, you're, you, it's just too much data. Yeah. You start, right. you start watching Netflix on LTE, you're getting high-def video. It's a gigabyte, gigabit an hour, gigabyte an hour. I mean, it just starts to really add up. Yeah. All right, then. Thanks, Leo. Thank you. Great to talk to you. Where are you going? Well, I do, I do travel, but, you know, I'm not traveling anytime soon. Oh, okay. I just want to have that capability when I do. When, if I do. Well, I'm able not to worry about it. You yeah, know? me too. I'm always very aware of it because I want to. I want to be able to take a, my phone and my phone number with me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Jim. All right, thank you. Take care. Yeah, the, you know, what I used to do, and I don't think you need to do this anymore. But what I used to do is get an unlocked GSM phone, and then just take it with me. And when I got to where I was going, I'd buy a SIM card in that country and pop it in. You have a local number. Nowadays, they've got world phones for almost everybody. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <clears throat> hey, you know, I want to talk as, as long as we're talking about upgrading phones. It's a good time to talk about Gazelle! Gazelle! The best way to recycle your old stuff. Look. I know more about this subject than any human alive because I've, I, don't, I don't keep a phone for more than a few months. I'm always moving to the next big thing. So what happens to the old phones? People often ask me. Well, I just have to tell you, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com. See, there's always somebody who wants that old phone. And I guess if you had the time and the inclination, you could put an ad in the paper or go to eBay. But why not just go to Gazelle? Look. I've got a, a Galaxy S3 I want to get rid of. Let's go to gazelle.com, Samsung. Uh, it is a uh, unlocked Galaxy S3. Let me find it here. It's the uh, white 32 gigs. There it is. It's in flawless. Well, it's not quite flawless. Let's say it's good condition. I'm, by the way, their data experts will, will validate the condition and often will upgrade you. They say, no, this is better than you said. I'm going to give you more money. Believe it or not, I don't know why they do that, but they do. You also wipe all your data. You don't have to worry about that if you forget. Hey, what? Two hundred forty-one bucks. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so now here's the deal. You put now this is good for thirty days, by the way. So there's no risk at doing getting this quote. And I got to tell you, you should do it sooner than later because they always go down in value. Nothing's going up in value. So you add that to your box. 
then you say, oh, you know, as long as I'm selling that, you ought to get rid of that iPhone 4S. I don't use that anymore. That was an AT&T. Yeah, uh, I think I had the 64 gig. Yeah, 265 But Put that in the box. You got an iPod maybe you want to dump? An iPad? Going to go to the I, the fourth generation iPad? Want to get rid of your iPad 3? All of this. Now, here's the beauty part. They pay the shipping on anything worth more than a buck. They send you a special box. You seal it in that box. Then the turnaround's great. They wipe off the data. They send you a check, a PayPal credit, or an Amazon gift card. Pro tip, do the Amazon gift card for 5% more. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. Load up that box. You such a good feeling when it's all gone to the great gazelle in the sky. And then you can justify buying that new gadget. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com. The easy way to recycle. Much more likely the Cisco router was faulty, to be honest. Uh, you know what, Mark? I don't know why, but I think the reason is because uh, everybody was selling, you know, 90% of their uh, offers were for that Apple stuff, and it's just easier for them to resell. They resell it on eBay. And uh, I just, it was, I think it was just simple, simpler, but I'm not sure. I, I never asked him. Yeah, it's probably more lucrative, but I, do, I just don't know. I think it was. I think what it was probably is that they felt people were the site was too complex. Um, it was just since ninety percent of people were selling Apple stuff anyway, they just they should just limit it to those things. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That's the number at 47 past the hour. Dick D. Bartolo, Mad Madis Magazine's maddest writer, joins us. I'm, I'm dying to find out how he survives Sandy. He lives on uh, New York's in, in New York's Upper West Side, kind of near the, the boat harbor. In fact, he has a boat. I hope the boat made it. We'll find out in a, in a minute. But first, uh, let's go to Terry in uh, Missouri. Hey, Terry, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, hi, Leo. Hi. Hey, I got a quick question for you. Um, I'm not computer savvy, so be patient with me. Okay. Uh, I'm very happy to control delete. And I'm very happy with that button there. <laughs> uh, I got a new uh, Dell computer a few months ago with Blu-ray on it, and it could be a combination of errors that I did that may have caused a problem. Putting a Blu-ray into the Blu-ray player, it goes into Windows Basic. Um, so I'm running into trouble in that. That's uh, no by the way, that's normal. All right, it started going to HDMI for some reason. Uh, as for the HDMI cable, I found out on how the regular VGA connector on you the know um, you know what Steve Jobs called Blu-ray on a computer a bag of hurt. Apple has never put Blu-ray on a computer, and it's this re these are the reasons why. Um, what you're experiencing is Blu-ray is heavily copy protected. So right. so because the movie industry basically assumes that everybody's a thief. And in order for you to play back a Blu-ray movie to anywhere except the computer, you need to have a fully HDCP, that's high-definition content protection, HDCP uh, chain. You, you, in other words, the copy protection won't let you play it back unless you have the proper copy protection on all the outgoing devices, and that requires HDMI. So, no, you can't play it through a VGA adapter. Oh, yeah, I mean, I found that out. But uh, what I'm looking at, also my TV set uh, only has a VGA and HDMI. It's basically a TV uh, flat right. screen. So play through the HDMI. Yep. But it, you have to have an HDCP-compliant TV and cable. Oh, so I got to look for that now when I buy a new monitor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate the movie industry! <laughs> 
And by the way, all this does, and you'll see, uh, you're, you're a newbie right now, Terry, but you'll see all this does is ends up teaching you how to pirate movies so you don't have to go through this. It has the exact opposite effect because guess what? There's no copy protection on that movie you downloaded from Pirate Bay. You don't have to deal with this. You just play it back in beautiful high def. I was going to use it now, Blu-ray for, I do video editing for church. I was going to use, you know, blue the Blu-ray for that. I just ran into that problem there. Uh, I never worked with an AMD app on before, and I'm running into problems with it shutting down. I thought it might be because of this Blu-ray issue. I don't no, know. No, you know, what Windows does is because it's so, Blu-ray is, requires so, I mean, you're, you're playing back very high quality video. It takes a lot of CPU. So it turns, it goes back into basic mode, turns off arrow and all that stuff. It can't, it doesn't have enough processor power to do those nice effects and play back a Blu-ray movie. All right. Uh, one more thing, too. The guy who's doing the editing down there in Atlanta, yeah. the one I use uh, mostly is the uh, uh, Video Studio uh, 15. From with- Pinnac- Pinnacle Systems. I enjoyed. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, yeah, that's I, a very nice program. Yep, they went the through one, a bad period. Uh, uh, version nine was okay. Then ten and eleven were terrible. So you 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 don't have crashes with fifteen. It's been reliable for you. Oh, I love it. You know, I put that Boris graffiti in there too, and just absolutely, just is this beautiful. It's almost like movie effect type of title stuff you see five years ago that that Hollywood was coming out with. Yeah. With and editing stuff, yeah, so. I think st- I, I always liked Studio a lot. I stopped using it when it got really crashy, so I'm glad to hear it's back to its uh, good old self. So version 15, Vegas. yeah, Vegas is great too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before somebody's dumb with computers like me, could I use it too? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. It's more sophisticated. Studio is great because it's very straightforward. It's very yeah, it's- easy to use. Uh, in fact, for a lot of people, it's probably the right choice because you could figure it out. It's from Pinnacle Systems. The name is so generic, it's sometimes it's hard to figure out if you've got the right thing. It's Pinnacle Studio, and I think it is very good. I think I paid mine for $69. Yeah, it's cheap. Yep. yep. It yeah. actually used to come with a lot of hardware. Oh, it's, 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 uh, I've never, like I said, it's, it's beautiful. I get done with the stuff down there. My, my pastor's impressed and everybody else is impressed. Yeah. You can even do 3D on it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I got 30 hours worth of, uh, video on tape when I drive a truck, which I'm doing right now. I tape it and cut it and slow it down to like maybe five minutes with the video. And I use that video editing system on there. It has that sound music thing down there, free music and copyright music you got to pay for. Uh, put on there a uh, sound design, whatever it's called. Beautiful stuff. So yeah, anyway, yeah. I thank you a lot. You have a good trip to Australia, man. All right, safe you. safe travels to you too, Terry. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. Take care. Yeah, the Sony Vegas is a little more expensive. It's a little more high end. Vegas Pro is about six hundred bucks. Uh, it also, you know, it does a lot more. But whenever something does a lot more, it means it's a there's a steeper learning curve. So uh, it's certainly for a higher end product. I would start. I would start. I think you know Windows Movie Maker, which is free. Take a look at that. Studio, I, I, I'm glad to hear it's it's back to its old ways. Pinnacle Studio, it's about 60 bucks, 70 bucks. Uh, a little more, maybe 10 bucks more for uh, the Premier Elements from Adobe. Like that a lot. And then the next step up is to $600 for Vegas, Vegas Pro. Uh, but there's some, there's you know, I used to think nobody's ever going to edit video because as a, as a television professional, that was always the part of the job I hated the most. Having to go into the edit suite and cut down video oh, take, takes hours of work. And I thought, why would anybody ever do, <laughs> voluntarily do this? And But apparently people do. I still don't. I have all my video and the home video I've ever shot is all unedited. What I learned was just shoot quick little six-second snippets. Then you don't have to edit. You can just put it together and think of it as a video photo album. That's, that's how I do it now. But obviously, if you're going to tell a story, you know, you, you you want to put something together a little bit nicer, it's going to take more work. And, you know, thank goodness there are people in the world who like to do that. Just not me. Frederick in Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Frederick. Oh, you mean Cedric. Cedric. Me? How you doing? Yeah. I'm doing all right. I'm doing horrible. I shouldn't say all right. <laughs> oh, Cedric, everybody calls me is doing horrible. Some sort of tech woe, I would imagine. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> just hang up the phone. Just say you're doomed. Forget about it and hang up the phone. Now get it. All right. I uh, made the first mistake I've made in a long time. I got Windows 8. 
Really, you don't like it? I, I actually liked it. It's just that I usually wait about a uh, six months to a year before I get a one. Yeah, that's usually a smart idea with anything. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, but I didn't know that Windows 8 was this much different. I thought it was just a, <laughs> a new way of using it. No, it's a whole new. It's it's a, it's a whole new Windows. They Microsoft said Windows reimagined, and uh, and it definitely is. It is it is a whole new Windows. Yeah, so even the way it's used, I was sort of disappointed. I thought it would, my four-year-old, my daughter started using the computer at age four. Now, I would I, think a kid, a four-year-old, would probably have no trouble with it. They, 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 there's something about touch that kids seem to get right away. Uh, but I got on this thing, and um, I, I, well, it's probably, a lot of it's probably my mistakes. So I'll give you a question so you can move on to your next customer. <laughs> okay. I, um, I put windows 8 on i had windows 7 and from and for the last couple of hours i never had a problem with Windows. that's why i didn't wait a long time i said okay it's going to work fine it's going right, to load right. up do everything for me that's what usually happens i put windows 8 in here um and then when you load it up and everything <laughs> it comes hold, hold on cedric we we managed to run up against the clock but hang on we'll get to you right after the break leo laporte mm -hmm. the tech guy Cedric. Didn't get to him. Let's see. Now, why is my uh, that stupid keyboard not? With technology yeah, constantly evolving and more people working remotely from different offices, San Francisco on the 49ers. Go, be a nightmare why is it not seeing happy? the keyboard? While keeping all your systems running smoothly. That's why I tell IT folks about Go to Assist from Citrix. Take control now it's, it of your entire IT world from one simple cloud-based platform. That worked. Go to Assist makes it easy to provide live support. To How do you like that? How do you like them apples? It worked. Banged it. So those are my favorite teams for Bing Sports. Let's see what the Niners are up to. They're happy people. Six and two on a bye week. Like that. Gotta love that. You're going to like this. I think this is, you know, this is pretty sweet. Look at this. This is the uh, sports uh, the, the sports app that uh, Microsoft did. Because what they did is to make some interesting tiles. They, they did a travel app. They did a sports app. Uh, yeah, I think they their stock app. I think they did a nice job. Let's see how the Russell 5000 is doing. Oh, this is still on there, though. Now, wait a minute. Now, that's been there a long time. Let's get rid of the office pet there. Okay, it's updating. Five ways the election can affect your retirement. Ooh. <laughs> I know who you're voting for. Did you vote? You, you already did your absentee ballot? Okay. I got mine in the last day. They said, if you don't mail it by uh, Halloween, it might be too late. So I made sure I got it out. We, of course, sure, our votes completely cancel each other all the way down. Did you? Good girl. You voted yes on all the negative things and no on all the positive <laughs> things. How did, are, do, yeah, the three strikes thing is messed up. That's messed up. It's got to be a serious crime. Yeah, and I don't believe in the death penalty, but that's where you and I disagree. Yeah, she likes killing people. You could, aren't you, are you surprised? Do you and Dennis get along politically? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Who was that? Who are you? Who were you? Lisa's talking a Republican. To? Oh, well, you have the death penalty uh, in the contract I signed for Twit. Well, oh, that's different. And for employees, absolutely. It's oh, criminal. Oh, okay. It's oh, criminals just, okay. that shouldn't get the death penalty, but employees. Oh, okay. Well, that's you know, that's just that's private enterprise. Common sense. Yeah. That's just common CEO sense. <laughs> she says, "I'm not a Republican. I'm a conservative. Who'd you vote for president? Who did you vote for for president, Ms. Conservative?" It's a solid state computer. It's okay to hit it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm gonna finish with Cedric because poor Cedric. Yeah, just... that, that's fine. And then I'll get to you. She's a capitalist. Well, I think you always. I think you always want your uh, uh, business people to be Republicans. But I'm pro-choice. But she's pro-choice, pro-death penalty. 
pro-gay marriage. Good, because Dick would be a little pissed off if you weren't. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, she's always been... Uh, she says you can marry whatever you want. A dog, a cat, chickens. Oh, now she tells me. <laughs> <laughs> Fairway, I'm sorry. Yeah, the only thing I'm, reason I'm against it is because so many innocent people get thrown in jail and potentially executed. And it's kind of, there's no turning back once you kill them. But... Dick T. Bartolo for president. I can't believe Yay. Roseanne Barr no, was running for know. president. Did you have Roseanne Barr on your ballot? Uh, no. In California, we did. Hold on. All right, nod 32, Leo. Last live read. You're on. Leo LaVoy, the tech guy. Poor, poor Cedric. He's got, he's got troubles. He's got woes. Hi, Cedric. You still there? Cedric? Oh, did I lose Cedric? You know, he was so worried about not having enough time that he kept saying, I, I know I'm not going to have enough time, and then he didn't have enough time. So in, in the future, if you don't think you're going to have enough time, just go full speed ahead. <laughs> he ran out of time. And then I think I lost him. So I'm sorry, Cedric. I apologize. Dick Bartolo is here to cheer me up. He is Mad Magazine's maddest writer. He survived Hurricane Sandy. Do you have power in Disneyland? Uh, plenty of power here at the studio. Zero power uh, at the marina. So but, your, boat, uh, your boat is not on the show today. Well, my boat, my, no, my boat's back up and running drop cam work. You're kidding. How are you getting the drop cam working? When you're running uh, your cord I ran house? it for two days on the wagon uh, portable power supply we talked about wow. last weekend. Two days it and ran. That's awesome. This morning I went down and hooked up an inverter so that now my drop cam is running off the boat batteries. And uh, is the boat running? Uh, the boat runs fine. Yeah. When I took a, my first trip on the river yesterday mm. to see some of the damage. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, God, it's a beautiful. There it is. It's yeah, a it's a beautiful. Sky. It's a that. gorgeous night. Wow. See, but what's great about it now is when those light stanchions light up yellow, I'll know that they have restored the power. So uh, right now, I know there's no power, power at the marina. But you know, the yeah. marina looks pretty good given the pictures I saw earlier. About yeah. Beat it, up oh, it exactly. Was. Although way, way in the background, you can see one dock standing straight up in the air on <laughs> on the right of your yeah, screen. Yeah. yeah. And of course, those pictures while. of Staten Island I saw in the news. I saw <laughs> there are people with boats in their yard. That yes. were just washed ashore by Hurricane Sandy. So I'm yes. so glad well, that you and yours yeah. uh, no, did all right. No, the people who put their boats on shore fared the worst. Oh, interesting. A lot of people took them out, put them up on blocks, never realizing the rivers could rise so far they would flood marinas yeah. and refloat the boats. Wow. Yeah. Well, whatever floats your boat. As they say. <laughs> exactly. So Dick usually joins us uh, each week with a gadget or a gizmo of some kind. What do you got for us today? You know, I have a, a fun gadget. Uh, I, I had a, a, another demo of it last week because we talked about it on the Gizwiz, the Havacam Nero 3. I have this a, is... I, oh, Nero, not Hero. Nero. Nero. Okay. Yes. N-E-O-3. Oh, uh, oh, did you order the, the Hero? The Neo. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. I the Neo the Hero 3. Oh, from Go GoPro. GoPro. Oh, okay. this is something two, else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Two totally different uh, oh, systems. Okay. This is for teachers, lecturers, people who give uh, lectures or uh, PowerPoint presentations. So you can hook it up to your computer. You can put your documents, your photos and everything. Oh, it's a document on, camera. Well, it's not actually. Yes, it, it can be. It can be. But if you're doing presentations, then you can show your pictures. There's a secondary camera so that if from time to time you want to be in the picture talking about your documents, the little annotation bar on the side lets you draw over the pictures yeah. or put arrows to what you're talking about. 
And another neat thing I didn't know about, uh, someone from the company called me uh, <clears throat> on Thursday. <clears throat> you can do freeze frame. You can put something under there, freeze frame it, and then you can change it out for another device or another photo. So while you're talking about the first device, it stays there. And then when you just click the mouse, it'll uh, bring up the second device. And as I said, here in the studio, I have the second camera toward my guest chair. Now, since there's no Giz Fizz today, Myra would not venture in from uptown. So I have no way to, uh, n no guest in the chair. But uh, so you can use it as a two camera system. Um, sells for two ninety nine, dollars And if you don't need the second camera, there's a model for $219. And has VGA out, a VGA out too, so you can also hook it to a projector, and you can do presentations without a computer that way. That's that's great. Now it's it's really really for teachers or anybody. I you know you see where you see it actually. I remember Microsoft I think had something similar when they were showing, and, and Apple too when they were showing off their phones. Yeah, exactly. I, I asked the guy. I said, "What's the biggest market?" And he said, "Schools, schools are the biggest oh, market." I would say they so, buy yeah. almost one for every single classroom. Yeah. Uh, and then on, on, the, on the right side of the screen, you can stack up all the videos you want to show. And then when it's time to show them, just drag them in with your mouse and they'll start running. It's, it's, it's a, a, a great gadget for people who lecture, give presentations and stuff like that. Very good. Dick D. Bartolo, his website is gizwiz.biz. Go there to find out more uh, and to play the What the Heck Is It game. Brand new game coming soon. So, oh, I guess it started. Oh, it's up. It's up. Oh, so what was that uh, Smurf garbage can that you had? You know what? what? No one guessed it. Most, most, A lot of garbage can answers. A lot of, I think it's an ashtray for a fire truck. It was. Like, <laughs> it looked like a little red garbage can. It did. Or a fire yes. plug of some kind. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and the item actually is, it's it's called the super rope cinch. And it's what like you do is not, that's not. That's exactly. The, oh, they should use that as a slogan. The <laughs> not that's not. Yes, you just drop a line in there, and instead of having to make a half hitch or or clove hitch or a bowl in, just drop the line in there. Oh, that's good because I always confuse my half hitch and my clove hitch, and I can't. Oh yeah, I tell can me never about it. Figure it out. It. Tell me. I would straighten that out before you get that troll on. <laughs> That's cool. And now there's a new one, though, but you're not going to tell anybody what it is. It's kind of, I think it's pretty obvious, but uh, yeah, Dan, no, then I no, used no. to wear these at uh, camp all the time. So if, what you do is you go to gizwiz.biz, you click the what the heck is it. Now, there are 12 autographed Mad Magazines for the right answer, 24 for the wrong answer. So yes. you guess where, where your chances are better. Um, yep. And you'll be winning the February 2013 issue of Mad Magazine, autographed by that guy right there, Dick. D. Bartolo. Thank you, Dickie D. You're welcome. Hey, have a, a wonderful, safe trip. Good. Good. I'll be back in a few weeks. Uh, don't forget, we still will do the show. You're still required to show up. We do have yes. the death penalty for hosts who don't show up. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I never should have signed that thing. <laughs> every tu every Tuesday, it's uh, the Giz Whiz here on twit.tv, round about uh, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern time on TWIT.TV. Thanks, Dickie D. You're welcome. Take care. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I have time for one more call. Let's see if I can. Charlie in Glendale, California. Hey, Charlie. Hi, Leo. Welcome. Thanks for taking my call. Love your show. Thank you. Um, I'm calling about the Drobo, which is a mass storage device. I'm and very, uh, very, very, very familiar with it. Oh, good. Well, my main question is I, I'm going to store music samples on it for composing. Okay. Is if I store the content on the Drobo without writing, uh, rewriting, and editing on the Drobo just as a storage device, will it last longer? Will the drives last longer? No. In no. fact, you no. It's a, it doesn't. The drive doesn't wear out faster because you're using it. I see. It's the same. Uh, okay, and, and, and you could you could make the case that. Uh, it's better to rewrite it <laughs> because it'll be updated. It'll be freshened, and uh, you might make the case that over time the magnetic signal might go de might deteriorate. I, but I, the truth is, there's no. It's neither neither way. The thing is spinning, uh, and it wears out at the same rate whether you write to it or not. I see. Okay. Well, thanks so much for uh, that. Uh,
Great. I like the Drobo a lot. D-R-O-B-O. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. See you down under. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, the Tech Guy is just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows now on the Twit Netcast Network, and you'll find them all at twit.tv. We talk about Windows and Windows Weekly, Macintosh, a Mac Break Weekly, iPad on iPad Today. You get your daily dose of tech news from Tech News Today and our weekly roundtable show, This Week in Tech. It's all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next time with another great Tech Guy podcast. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.